friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Welcome to Code Wars Code Katas, episode 55. I forgot to put episode 55 in the title down there, but this is the 55th episode of Code Wars Code Katas. Uh, if you're new to the show, you can go to github.com slash codinggarden slash code dash katas. You can see all of the code we've written in all previous episodes. And thank you very much, Posivius, for all the bits. Uh, there's been a ton of a ton of support already before the stream has even started, and I, and I appreciate you. Um, but yes, go to this GitHub repo. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a kata for me to solve, you can open up an issue. I think we'll probably be going through the issues tonight. And if you've never heard of, of Code Wars Code Katas, you can go to codewars.com. And uh, these are essentially user submitted coding problems that have test, suite that, test suites that you need to make pass uh, to solve the problem. Uh, they, they range in difficulty all the way from 8Q, which are some of the more beginner friendly and easiest, all the way up to 1Q, which are some of the uh, hardest. <laughs> I don't know where we're gonna be at today. We'll see. We'll see what we're gonna do. I have, a, like, the, there's, a, there's some, some really old issues in here. And maybe I'll try to do some of these older issues, but the older issues are harder problems. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and um, you, all of the past episodes are on YouTube as well. So uh, if you go on YouTube, you can watch all of the past episodes. Yeah, here we are. Welcome, everyone. A 1Q is basically something you would never do on a daily basis. Yeah, the, the, I think I've done two 1Qs, and both times it took me uh, two episodes for each of the problems. It took me a long time to solve it. But welcome everyone. Thank you all for being here. Yeah, people are getting the drops going, so if you're new here, we can do the drop game. If you do exclamation mark drop me. Um, I thought we were doing code, I mean, this is Code Wars. Code Wars, Code Katas. Do you mean Code Clashes? <laughs> What's up, champ? Thank you for being here. Yeah, a lot of people have found that URL shortener. But there you go, drop me. <laughs> That'll drop your avatar. Uh, and here's mine. Oh, that's gonna be a, uh, maybe. Oh no, it's gonna be right off. But if you're, if you land in the garden, um, you will uh, grow a seedling. So yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Who is that? Josh Cooper Tech. Great work. Right on top of him is uh, Jado423. <laughs> good job. So uh, there's a 90 second cooldown, so you can only drop once every 90 seconds. Uh, but have fun with that. Last time we're about to take vote suggestions for a 2Q. Yeah, but then we went with Newts. It's true. I think... I, I f I don't think there's anything else that could distract us today. There could be, and there usually is. But I I feel like we could get something, something done. <laughs> well, welcome, Bartastic. It's very, I mean, you're in the middle of the night, but thank you for being here. Um, all righty, we got some follows uh, even before we started. Uh, Brian D. Guy, thank you for following. Welcome to the Coding Garden. Uh, Laser Beam, one, two, three, four, five, six, thank you for following. And Drew Leet, three, five, four, thank you for being here as well. Uh, all the supports, all the supports. I appreciate you all. Uh, John with the four month tier three resub. Thank you so much, John. That's a huge support, and I really, really appreciate you. Uh, Salty Bunny with the 10 bits. David Snyder with the 100 bits. Bosivius with the 200 bits. Bosivius with the 100 bits. Bosivius with another 200 bits. And Bosivius with the 200 bits. <laughs> you have so many bits, Bosivius. <laughs> Giving me all the bits. I appreciate you. Um, and what have people redeemed? Oh! B fig tree, what's up? <laughs> they have redeemed uh, two focus modes. We'll redeem those uh, for the first kata that we solve. And BM Vinicius, thank you for the hydrate. Space cup, cheers. Josh Cooper Tech, cheers. Actually, if I do this, you can see Josh Cooper Tech. <laughs> thank you, cheers. Uh, and who's here? Deep Static, thank you for following. Watch the first kata, kata be a math one. It's possible. Yeah, and, and David mentioned, David was trying to trigger a hype train. I think I have it on a more difficult setting now. <laughs> Why are people doing that? Um, yeah. Yeah, the, there are a ton of people that got gifted a sub. Look at all of these gifted subs this month. And here's the thing, it's gonna reset on Saturday. On, res on Saturday, all of these gifted subs are gonna go away. That's okay, though. But, yeah, a lot of you have been gifted, which is great. And Tobias, thank you for the follow. Am I sure this is live? I don't know. W what's real? What is what is real? Donov! Thank you for that, don't, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. <laughs> I got to 50, so I'm fine. Yeah, look, John's on there. John, uh, 
Oh, not uh, last month. Last month. <laughs> Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. If you haven't heard about Twitch Prime, which is actually a very common occurrence because a lot of people here are new to Twitch. They're coming over from the land of YouTube, which is where they found me. Um, you, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can link it to Twitch. <laughs> Thank you very much to Clave for that Twitch Prime sub. We've triggered a hype train, everyone. Uh, but yeah, if you click that link, you can link your Amazon Prime account to Twitch, and then you get um, one free sub that you can use on any any uh, any streamer. Not just me. Greg! What's up, Greg? Thank you for the bits. Thanks for being here. Looks like my chat is broken. My chat is not showing cheer modes. Turtle Monkey with 100 bits. Andrew with the Twitch Prime resub. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Four months! Coding Pog Champ. <laughs> Wait, why... Why did that message not render the emotes? I thought we fixed the emote rem rendering this mor morning. Corgo 100? David with 100 bits. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, Posiphius with the 300 bits. Hype. Hype, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, Cheyenne says, quick question. How should I get ready for a front-end position technical interview? They listed JavaScript, HTML, XML, and JSON on the job description. It's tricky. Uh, if it's, I mean, you can always ask what what the style of the interview is going to be, because um, a lot there's a lot of th different things that it could be. It could be a whiteboarding interview. It could be um, they give you a coding challenge and a test suite. They leave you in a room and then they come back later to see if you solved it. It could be a pair programming interview where you have to pair with someone else um, to solve a problem together. Um, it's really hard to say. It also could be a tech screener where it's not, they won't necessarily have a technical challenge, but they might just ask you a bunch of questions about JavaScript and potentially other like front end related things. So it's really hard to say unless you know a little bit more about um, that company and their interview process. I would say check out that company on uh, Glassdoor. Glassdoor usually, people sometimes post interview questions there so you can get an idea of what, what the interview might be like. Um, but it's hard to say because there's so many different things that it actually could be. Want to watch me do PHP? I guess that could be fun. Thanks for the bits again. XML, um, what does this stand for? Something markup language? What's the X stand for in XML? Extensible? <laughs> Extensible, yeah, Br Bratloff has it. Extensible markup language, okay. Um, but yeah, XML is just another data format. These days, we pretty much only use JSON. I'm not, I mean, not only. The majority of things you're going to come across these days use JSON as their data format. But XML used to be that used to be the predominant format format before JSON took over. This is my sh stretch timer and break timer. If you all have been sitting in front of your Twitch machine, consuming content all day, feel free to take a stretch, stand up. Bad markup language. <laughs> Extreme programming. Yeah. Um, if I send a cheer through that, it doesn't get detected as a cheer. Yeah, it, I mean, uh, it doesn't seem like it was a real cheer. I have no idea. Uh, and JD with a hydrate. Cheers, JD. Is it appropriate to ask, though? Yeah, I think you can be explicit in your question. Uh, feel free to uh, draft a question and then drop it in our Discord in, like, the career help channel. Um, but I think the question should be something like, hey, I'm preparing for the interview. I would just like to know if you could tell me a little bit more about what, sh what I should expect. Uh, will this just be technical questions? Will there be a coding challenge? Will there be a whiteboarding, inter uh, will there be a whiteboarding problem? I think it's okay to ask that. And Alex the Hazard, thank you very much for the bits. <laughs> and Yakuzuma, thank you for following. Welcome, Shadow. Thanks for being here. Yeah, and um, so whenever I unlocked the, the sacred Twitch checkmark as a Twitch partner, um, I unlocked more founder badges. So a certain number of people got founder badges, even though they weren't the first 10. Yeah. Description extensible markup language. Shadow? Thank you so much, Shadow, for that Twitch Prime sub. <laughs> much appreciated. Coming in Afro is hard. I could see it. Sounds like a thing. Oh, Drills has been working on the Popper bot, a Discord bot. That's pretty cool. Welcome, welcome. It's chill. <laughs> Kotlin. Kotlin could be fun. What's up? Uh, Super Saxon. Good morning. 
Um, and Benja Benja, thank you for the follow. Thank you for being here. Yeah, you're welcome, Cheyenne. Um, all right, let's say hi to everybody. If you would like me to acknowledge you, you can type in the chat, hi, hello, hey, morning, afternoon, howdy, or kata, kata. <laughs> if you type any of these things, uh, your message will appear here. And uh, I'll do my best to, to say hello if I can. Uh, we're going back. 21 minutes in time. Uh, slant. Hello. What's up? Nikki Poo. How's it going? What's up, Shaye? Bosipius. And uh, Elpin Sujanito. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah. Doc says, time to unwind from a stressful product launch with a relaxing one cucata. Yeah, I launched a product today. Whoa! <laughs> Bosipius, thank you so much for the five gifted subs. That's too much support. Uh, congrats, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. But yeah, I launched a product. Uh, it went really well. The, the final demo was great. Um, now I'm ready to just chill. But I'm, I'm not opposed to doing a really hard problem tonight. I'm not. What's up? Nova Script and Sarab and Slake and Gonza. What's up? JD, welcome. Hello, Kabinks. You got sponged. Who says, howdy, Mr. Garden. Well, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Shark turn up. How's it going? Uh, jo Johira or Drahira. Hello. Kaos. Rebatum Studios. Quante. What's up? What's up? Bino says, do I have any tips on using Vue, Bulma, and Sass? Not really. I mean, I would say instead of using Bulma, you might try using Vuefy. Uh, Vuefy is a component, a Vue component library that's written on top of Bulma. So this might make your life a little bit easier. I don't really have any tips, though. <laughs> and hello, Andrew. What's up, Bear Cool? Yeah, thanks for that question, Cheyenne. Be sure to post in the Discord. Cerebus, how's it going? What's up, DS Legends? Uh, BM Vinicius says, have I ever dealt with imposter syndrome? I have. And um, I do almost every day. Clarkio, what's up, dude? <laughs> dude, where's my bar? <laughs> Check out Clarkio. He's a member of our Life Coders team. Uh, but yeah, it, I I can't say it enough, but everyone deals with this this feeling of feeling of like you, you don't belong, feeling like you don't know enough, feeling, yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't have a good, <laughs> I don't have a good, a good uh, thought on how to fix it or anything like that. Just know that everybody deals with it, and it's really just you uh, not recognizing your own accomplishments and potentially recognizing other people's accomplishments, but not your own. But wherever you are, you made it there for a reason. So be confident in that fact. And Foodig, hello, I'm doing good. What's up, Leo? Uh, Xbash says, what should I do? I have a degree in electronics and I'm more of a hardware guy, but there are not many jobs in my country. Should I just learn web development? Clarkio, <laughs> thank you so much for the upgraded sub uh, from Revive New. Very much appreciated. Um, yeah, should I learn web development or go for Python and more hardware? I want to get a job. It's hard. I have no idea. So, I mean, if you if you search the job boards, you probably will find a lot more uh, web development or like software focused jobs. So do you have a degree in uh, electrical engineering or yeah, I'm curious like what your degree is exactly, but I don't know. It's tricky, especially in times like these where places might not, might not actually be hiring as much. Um, you could potentially do web development stuff, especially if you're already technical, you might be able to pick it up pretty easy. Uh, crash course. Did I already react to the new changes in JS around Dolish coalescing? No. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, no worries, Clarkio. Uh, and um, shout out very handsome Billy. He's a cool dude. Ba -ba. Um, yeah, I don't know. Claves, how's it going? What's up, GD Mikey and Brattle and John and Drills? We're gonna crush those katas. What's up, Alex and Plugles and Keys and uh, Xamar plays uh, and Asheroth and Vaters. How's it going? What's up, Alex the Hazard and Arm Pie and Udemonia and Mob and Chad with the C who says howdy. <laughs> I need to add good evening. You're right. You know what? But we changed our thing to say uh, slash B, which is a word boundary. Let's just put the word evening. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll get caught up. Where were we? Where were we? Right here. Hello, Turtle Monkey. Thanks for being here. What's up, Loco Dev? Hello, hey. Night, vo night voice. Night voice. What's up, Dev Henrique? Uh, Finzo, what's up? What's up? 
Uh, Cody McMike says, switching between watching your stream and the CS lecture. Well, your CS lecture is probably more important, <laughs> but thank you for tuning in. Uh, the Goofy Mango, what's up? Uh, one up, one up, Jeff. Hello, hello. Yeah, I haven't reacted to Nullish Coalescing, um, but I've used it quite a bit. <laughs> this code rocks. How's it going? <laughs> Jay Walker says, sort of new, learning some stuff, watching you in the background. Well, very good. Thank you for keeping me keeping me in the background. Jim, Jim McDonald, what's up? What's up, Artist Sean, who says, just got here. Well, welcome. Hello, Nessie. Welcome, everyone. We did it. We said hi to everybody. D. Thompson says, I love everything you're doing and your amazing nature. Keep doing amazing things. Well, thank you very much, D. Thompson. Um, shout out to D. Thompson. I don't know how often you stream here on Twitch. Hype train success. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I saw this stream was happening on... Well, there was something similar related to LinkedIn that happened on YouTube as well. But thanks for being here. Hype train! Thank you, everyone. <laughs> 10 subs, 900 bits. Great work. I appreciate you all. My phone let me down. I just got the notification. I'm telling you, that was the thing. This morning, I was like, there's one thing that I want to work on, and I couldn't remember it, and it's my mobile app. I wanted to work on my mobile app because right now the live stream embed is broken. And the reason I have that mobile app is so that I can send notifications immediately when I go live instead of having depend to depend on the Twitch notifications. Ah, I need to put that in my Trello board. But thank you for being here, Acid Spark. What's up? And uh, Fahir, thanks for the follow. Perfect timing. It's always perfect timing. <laughs> thanks for being here, the she boss as well. Choo choo! Um. Can you send me the link to code words? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay. <laughs> so if you go to this GitHub repo, github.com slash coding garden slash code dash katas, uh, you can open up an issue and link to the kata that you uh, would like me to attempt to solve. Um, and um, because you're here, I might actually take a look at that one because I don't really know if anybody else is here. But if you're here and you have submitted a kata, uh, let me know in the chat, because I will take a look at it. We're going to look at the issues before we get started. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's an I it's a cross-platform app, so it's on iOS and Android. Do I recommend to finish learning CoreJS or just skipping ahead to React? I recommend learning all the things you need to know about, need to know about JavaScript to write React before, to before do, jumping into React. You, you tech, like, it, it really depends. I've, I'm used to teaching like extreme beginners, people that have like literally never coded before. And so for them to jump directly into React is actually pretty confusing. Fudig, 100 bits, says, I love the stream and keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much, Fudig. Um, but yeah, people that have literally never, never, like they're brand new to coding, they've only been coding JavaScript for like a couple of months and then they jump directly into React. There's so much confusion, be confusion because there's so many things that um, so many JavaScript concepts that they don't know yet that they confuse for being React concepts. And uh, Greg with the gifted sub to Deep Thompson. Thank you, much. Thank you very much, Greg. Sharing the love. Very much appreciated. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. It, it depends. It, it really depends. I say you should probably learn, know a good bit. I'll, here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you one of my streams that I did. Um, coding garden react. I did like a react Q and a, um, Oh, here it is. Uh, react JS Q and a ask me anything about react. I'm pretty sure this is the one, but if you watch this stream, there are parts of the stream where I make it a little bit interactive. I actually talk to you, the viewer, and I'm like, hey, I point to a piece of code and I'm like, is this React or is this JavaScript? And you would be surprised how many people, beginners, actually think some JavaScript things are React things. That's all That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Let's keep going. Yeah, CS50 is cool. Coming from Python. I think they do CS50, they do Python and CS50 though, don't they? What's up, Boxnox? I stream when people want me to, mainly just to help people get better. Nice. Uh, just gave away six scholarships to give full rides to a coding boot camp. Wow, that's some serious generosity. Nice. Try and get my old computer wiped so I can sell it to try to make some money back while well, it's still worth anything. <laughs> nice. I wish I'd written my server in TypeScript so I could have no coalesce in Node. Um, I mean, you could still use Babel. You don't have to use TypeScript. 
You can literally use uh, Babel Node or something like that. Symbiote, how's it going? Um, yeah, yeah. And Slake, thank you for that hydrate. Cheers. What is a kata? We will talk about it very soon. Very soon. What's up, Liquid Oxygen? I feel like it's been a while. Thanks for being here. Degrees in electronics engineering, so doing microcontrollers, PCB sensors. The thing is... I feel like this degree pays a lot more than software engineering, but I don't know, You might it might be really hard to find that kind of job where you are, I don't know. Is there any Coding Garden merch? Yeah! You could get this shirt right here. <laughs> uh, exclamation mark code. That'll link you out to Teespring, or it should. There it is. Um, oh no, not that one, that's the tank top. But if you go here, that will take you to my shop and then if you go here you can see some other shirts that are on teespring um the thing is i have the if you want to support me the probably the best way is th either through donations or bits um i have every almost everything on here set with like a very minimal amount of profit uh like maybe i'll make maybe a dollar off of a t-shirt um, but if you like the shirts feel free to buy them my my newer logo shirts for some reason disappeared i need to re-add them here um, but you can also check out Redbubble. Um, do I have a command for that? Support? Stickers? I don't know, but if you go to coding.garden uh, slash support, there are some links. Uh, so yeah, Redbubble is the other place. You can get stickers on here. Um, and you can also get shirts. So there's the new Coding Garden logo as a little pocket shirt. Well, it's not a pocket, but it's where a pocket would be. <laughs> Um, that's about it. Foodig, more bits! Is there anything that can replace Electron browser window and be more efficient or better performance? Not really. I mean, if you wanna if you wanna use web technologies to build desktop applications, it's kind of all you can do. Um, there is a thing that I forget what it's called, but Basically, instead of bundling an entire Chromium browser, it just uses the, the default web browser window on anything that's cross-platform. I, I forget what it's called, because I tried to make something with it. Steve! Steve Beans! <laughs> with the 500 bits. Thank you very much, Steve Beans. Um, I really want to find it. Because it's interesting. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. Um, window app. Hmm. Give me a second. I'm actually really curious what that thing was called, and I have some code somewhere. I'm going to find it. What am I looking for? Is it Snowpack? I don't think it's Snowpack. Um... Beans with the sub. Thank you very much, Steve Beans. Um, all right, what are we doing? Mm, it's not there. It's not there either. Yeah, I lost it. But just let it be known. There's a thing. <laughs> there's a thing out there. Actually, I'll look up Snowpack. I don't. I've never. I, it sounds familiar. But there is a package out there that basically allows you to launch a browser window and load an HTML file inside of it. But it can get rid of the window Chrome. But it uses the the built-in browser window of the operating system. So, for example, on a Mac, you would use the the built-in Safari browser window. Um, so, unlike Electron, you don't have to bundle the entire um, Chromium browser. Yeah, what's Snowpack? Oh no, that's not it. Um, okay. Yeah, NWJS is uh is an alternative to Electron, but it does the same thing in that it's it's wrapping a Chromium window. A lot of people prefer this to Electron, uh, and it's it has a similar API. So if you, this potentially might be faster. 
I don't know. At the end of the day, if you want real performance, you might just need to build a native desktop app instead of using something like Electron. It's killing me, though. I want to know. I want to know what that thing was called. Um, Node.js cross-platform browser window. Open. No. All right. We're going to go to the Google instead of the DuckDuckGo. Node GUI? Oh, I guess, yeah, I, another option potentially is um, this library called LibUI. And then it has bindings for React and Vue. People have created things for it. Um, so LibUI is a C library that is a, uh, basically allows you to write uh, GUIs cross-platform. But there's React uh, Proton. Um, Proton Native that uses libui. So basically you can build truly native apps using react like syntax. It's it's different than electron cuz you actually don't get a browser window, you're getting literal native window objects. And then there's also guido, which is the view version of that. Um, guido, did I spell that right? <laughs> guido view libui. Viewdo, not guido. <laughs> That's funny. But check out Vito and Sweet Tea. Sweet Tea, thank you very much for the, the two month sub. I appreciate you. Vito. This is the same thing, but it's Vue instead of React. All right, we'll stop talking about this. This looks interesting. I've never seen this before. Build performant native cross platform desktop apps with JavaScript and CSS. Node GUI. Wow. All right, that's enough. We've gone down the rabbit hole. Um, all right, <laughs> I missed a bunch of questions, but we got to go. You've ruined the word GUI for me, <laughs> Guido. <laughs> GUI. I used to call it a GUI. Um, it's funny, like if you, if you're in the world of programming um, and you haven't really talked to people about the terms that you're learning, you might actually pronounce them wrong. Um, all right, let's acknowledge these follows and then let's write some code. Uh, Grim, thank you for following. One up, thanks for being here. Duke, Duke Full Stack, thanks for being here. Four twenty, Sam, thank you for being here. Uh, Sebra Saxon, thanks for the follow. Uh, Sinful, thank you for following. Nate Dunn, thanks for the follow. Deforal, much appreciated. And Atakin, thank you for following. Owl, I am root, says take my extra bits. Thank you very much, Owl, I am root. <laughs> Neutralino JS, I don't think that's it either. It's killing me. I gotta remember what it is, because it's actually really cool. I'd like to build some stuff with it. Convert any spa into a lightweight desktop app. Hmm. Oh, welcome, Madigan. Yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll stop talking about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if there are any new, um, uh, any new issues submitted here. And SheDot, what's up, SheDot? Shout out to SheDot. SheDot is the, uh, the person who uh, created the intro animation for my stream. I commissioned it from them. Um, this thing, which is pretty cool. Nice little pixel animation. Yeah. Welcome, she dot. Um, what's the thing I use for getting the slug from Code Wars URLs? Oh, it's a thing that Andrew made. I can give you the source. Actually, I don't know if he has it hosted anymore. Code Wars slug. Raphael, <laughs> who also says, take all I have left. Thank you very much. Um, here it is. So this is a little user script I have installed that uh, whenever you go to a kata, it puts the actual slug instead of the ID. Okay. Uh, we have a few issues that were submitted seven days ago. I don't think I see any new ones. My adi advice for getting really frustrated over front-end web dev frustrations. I mean, uh, the advice I have is for getting frustrated over anything. I mean, especially programming is... Um, it's going to happen. So <laughs> just... Uh, uh, convince yourself and make yourself realize that you're gonna get frustrated. Don't think you're not gonna get frustrated because it's frustrating and it, it takes time. Um, so, yeah, I think that's my advice is 
uh, set your expectations because if you set your expectations wrong, you're going to be disappointed and extremely frustrated. But I get I get frustrated. Things take a really long time, and I've come to terms with that. Hello, uh, Erno. Welcome, welcome. I love that. What do we love? <laughs> oh, Revive Newt. Hi. I just totally skipped past it because I just saw emotes. <laughs> it's like, what is, what's happening? What's up, Revive Newt? Uh, thanks again for those bits. Very interesting. How long am I streaming for? Welp, somehow I've already been live for 44 minutes. Um, I plan to go for about two hours more. Two to three hours more. And thank you, uh, Licentios, for that follow. Uh, oh, my keyboard. Oh, no, sorry, my, my intro. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. I like it, too. It's really cool. <laughs> I had the idea. Uh, it, was, like, it was inspired by the uh, lo-fi hip-hop animation. But I was like, Shida, what do you think of this? Do you think you could, you, you could make it happen? And they made it happen. Never really thought about it that way. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that my advice might actually be useful. Um, yeah. I think I've, it's it's kind of how I approach everything in life because disappointment, frustration comes from like potentially unrealistic expectations. So just don't expect anything and you'll be fine. <laughs> What's up, Razor One? Uh, I've not built any Heroku build packs. I've used them, but yeah. Oh, it's on Greasy Fork. Nice. Yeah, plotting. <laughs> What's up, Josh? Um, you have not missed anything. We just we're getting we're getting done saying hello to everyone. I'm about to start writing some code. We have two focus modes, just just waiting, just ready to go. Um, I think what I might do, like, here's the thing: this three Q is probably going to be really hard. I mean, it's not gonna it's not like insanely difficult, but. I have a feeling that I'm going to struggle if I attempt to solve this. So this is a 3Q. The scale of, of difficulty goes from 8Q, which is the easiest, all the way to 1Q, which is the hardest. So 3Q is not the hardest that there is, but it's still actually pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Just it, it should be unexpected that it actually works, <laughs> I guess. I think that's what I'm saying. Oh, you're welcome, fa 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 Thanks for being here. Some stoic philosophy. What's up, the Danif? Somebody else has been, had mentioned that before. Like, I had never actually heard of Stoicism. And then I looked into it, and I was like, oh, yeah. That's, that's kind of how I think. That's my philosophy. <laughs> KSX, thank you for that follow. Uh, a project to start learning Socket.io. A simple chat app is usually the, usually the way to go. You could build, build a simple game. Um, like, what was that thing called? The game with the emojis and the animals. Dung Hero. Dung, dung Hero. <laughs> what it, well, I think it's like Dung Hero. Yeah, Dung Hero Online. Um, oh, look at it. It's still... So look at this. This code has been running in production since I launched it. I mean, like, since, since I built it on stream. And 615,000 dungs have been collected. So if you go to this website, you can collect a dung. And the counter just keeps going up. <laughs> But this uses sockets. Everyone go there now. Let's try to collect all the dungs. Um, but this uses Socket.io. So everybody that goes to this web page um, is being, like, the, the, <laughs> the state of the app is being emitted from the server in terms of which dungs have been collected and also where the animals should be on the screen. So, like, if I open this up in two tabs, uh, the animals will actually be in very similar locations because um, it's it got that information from the server. And as you can see, we collected all of the dungs. Great work, everyone. But... The fact that this is still running just amazes me. That's amazing. Like it hasn't crashed. It hasn't. It hasn't gone down. <laughs> Six six hundred fifteen thousand dungs collected to date. Um, but this uh, this this is open source. So if you if you go on GitHub and search for uh, Dung Hero. Well, not there. Not there. Search on uh, Coding Garden. Dung. Not Doug. Dung. Dung. <laughs> Dung Hero. <laughs> The code's here, uh, and I built it on stream. Uh, this was actually an hour, an hour coding challenge, so I built, I built it in an hour. So uh, something like that might be fun. Yeah, I'm open to it, Doc. I'm o yeah, I guess we'll vote. We'll vote on which one I do. And if it's a hard one, you're just going to see me struggle on a hard problem for the next three hours. 
In exams, go for easy questions, but you go for the hardest. <laughs> Zero Q, make Google. Yeah, you could you could do any sort of uh, two-player game with sockets. Yeah. And Joe, thank you for that follow. Yeah, because David made uh, tic tac toe, tic tac toe. I'm surprised my husband doesn't play that. Uh, can you run Code Wars locally? I mean, uh, with a little bit of work, yes, and that's usually what I do, uh, but the way they have it set up is you actually run your code inside of here. So clean, yeah. Yep, the is it New Year's Day also, but that this one is a lot more complex because the, the, the code for this is so complex because I actually did a lot of optimizations so that the site wouldn't just come to a crawl if there are a bunch of people's mice on the page because... Um, like, we've load tested this thing with hundreds and hundreds of simultaneously connected people, and you can still see all of their mice moving on the page. Uh, but that was that was not exactly an easy feat. Nice. Good job, Gonza. <laughs> what do we do with the dung? Oh, you just collect it. You just collect it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, ma I mainly use JavaScript. You can do a lot of OOP with JavaScript. Yeah, and as you can see, like it, it's not the, it's not amazing. Um, I'm talking about this page. Like, basically, what it does is instead of emitting every single mouse movement to every single client, the server just collects the current location, and then the client interpolates how a mouse should go from one location to the next. Yeah, you can also uh, set your, uh, if you do actions dot set emoji. I'm gonna do the nerd face. Yeah, and now anybody that's on this page should see me as a little nerd. But yeah, I use JavaScript. Uh, it's definitely possible to do OOP with JavaScript. Um, just this past Saturday, I did. Uh, I was implementing a board game engine with an OOP. It takes me an hour to remember what a for loop is. That's okay. It takes practice. All right. Coding Garden has gained 31 new subs in the last 24 hours. Oh, that's nice. Good morning, GM Dawson. Okay. Hello, Eternal Dev Coder. Welcome to the show. Got me curious, though. Is slamming your desk actually helpful to release tension? Uh, possibly. <laughs> but um, don't hurt yourself, because then that's even worse. Um, I actually have a drum set. Um, and I don't play that often. But it is a nice stress relief to just hit things. <laughs> it is. Welcome, Joe. Thanks for being here. Um, how do you get the emoji keyboard on Ubuntu? I think I think the Ubuntu, whatever window manager they use by default, actually has an emoji keyboard. I don't know what the keyboard shortcut is. I have a degree in computer science. And uh, the way that program was structured is we learned to code with Java. And then I took like a systems programming course, which where we did C and um, like bash programming or like bash scripting. Um, I did an algorithms course and we did C++. Um, there's a lot of lower level languages. Welcome, welcome, all right. I do, <laughs> I think it's because of my YouTube stuff. People find my YouTube channel and then they come follow on Twitch. What kind of a drum set? It's actually really cool. Um, one day I'm gonna show it on stream, but it is a, um, a Tama cocktail jam kit. So it's a very compact drum kit. This is it. It's a beautiful thing. So basically the, the bass drum, um, instead of being like vertical like this, uh, it's it's upward. It, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like a floor tom. Basically, it's like a floor tom. And then your bass kick um, goes up, and then everything attaches to that. So it's nice and portable, but it actually sounds like really decent. Splitting wood is good for stress. Or like... Uh, Chopping woods? I don't know. What's a low-level language? Uh, anything that's closer to the me <laughs> to the metal. Um, so if you learn about computer architecture, um, at the bottom of it all, it's it's all just switches. Everything's just a switch. <laughs> um, but to uh, so if when you t when people are talking about transistors on the CPU, those are actually just switches. They're either they're either on or off. But to program those, it's just zeros and ones. It's power or no power. And a level up from that, um, or maybe multiple levels, is instead of writing all of your code in zeros and ones, you write uh, what's known as um, like machine code or mach machine language or uh, assembly language, which is a specific 
programming language for a specific CPU, like the an Intel processor or an AMD processor. But um, every CPU has a different instruction set, so if we had to write programs that way, it'd be very cumbersome. So then you move up to a higher level language than that, which is something like C or C++, and those languages uh, compile down directly to run on the metal, <laughs> the, the CPU itself. Um, and so those are lower level languages because they go directly from that language to something running directly on your computer. Whereas JavaScript is a very high level language because JavaScript is actually just running inside of your web browser and your web browser is potentially implemented with something like C++ and then that is running on the CPU. Um, so a low level language is just something that's closer, closer to the metal. metal. There's a whole lot of memory management and stuff like that. I probably skipped some descriptions and steps in there, but yeah. Uh, probably in a week or two, I'm going to continue Onitama. We just talk here. I should be in the just chatting category. <laughs> Had a class on three up-and-coming languages. That's nice. Yeah, I took a programming languages course as well, which uh, I thought was going to be... He, this is These are all the programming languages, but it wasn't. It was uh, how to write a compiler and a lexer and like, what actually goes into programming languages. Yeah. What level of math does it require to be at my level? Oh... Uh, <laughs> for my actual job? College algebra, that's about it. X86 assembly. I guess that's true, yeah. <laughs> what I literally just said. <laughs> uh, no math, no compiler, 1Q suggestion. All right, I'll take a look at it, Doc. Maybe we'll do that. I think we're going to vote on it. I got to get caught up, and then we'll we'll, write, we'll actually write some code. And thank you, uh, Elp Schwanito, for that posture check. Sarab with the hydrate. Cheers. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, I mean, I went through the same thing when I was in university. Like, it just moves so slow, and there's so many other things that you need that aren't programming, but it's just how the world works. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> usually it takes an hour before we start write co writing code. I keep teasing you, though. I'm like, all right, we're going to write code, and then we don't actually write code. Yeah, it's totally possible. I mean, you can, yeah. So Python is also a higher level language. It's not a low level language like uh, C or C++ because it is uh, interpreted just like JavaScript is interpreted. Um, but I mean, you can you can start anywhere. The tricky thing is there are some habits you might develop that you might need to unlearn when you maybe go a bit deeper or you try to understand more about it. But yeah, you can start anywhere. Oh, well, thank you, uh, CKFP. Still here after the Kitboga raid. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Free Code Camp released an algebra course. Nice. You can also check out uh, Khan Academy. They have uh, free math classes, too. What was the first programming language I learned? Uh, yeah, for the frequently asked questions, should, people ask, like, what languages do I know? Um, it's probably PHP, but, uh, like, this was when I was... I was, like, 15 years old. I didn't even, I didn't even know what I was doing, but I wanted to do something, and I found my way into creating a PHP script. And then after that, it was probably ActionScript, which is the scripting language that ran inside of Flash. I'm drinking invisible water, this is true. Don't write code, <laughs> no, write code. <laughs> oh no, hopefully you're, hopefully you're doing okay, Revive Newt. Stuck on the couch. Uh, what's Mimo? Is that something for learning Python? Oh, not that. Emo, learn to code. Oh, interesting. That's pretty cool. I'm a second year comp sci student and I still don't have the habit of coding just for fun. Um, the thing is not everyone develops that habit. I'm, I, I'm, I'm weird. I don't know. I, I like, I really like coding. <laughs> like, to, to me, it's like a second language. It's like I can use it to do the things that I want. I, I can make the things exist that I want to exist in the world. And that's fun for me, but a lot of people uh, just treat it like a like a job, and that's okay. You don't. It doesn't have to be fun. I like it to be fun, though. I mean, it's it's fun to me. What's up, Walid? Welcome. Uh, HTML is technically a markup language, but yeah, somebody commented on my recent YouTube video that was like, "Everyone, he called HTML a programming language." I don't know. I find learning concepts concepts is better than learning a specific language's implementation. Yeah, that's true. I I I. Fr I forget to mention this, but yes, if you learn conditionals, if you learn loops, if you learn about functions, that's about it. <laughs> Arrays? 
uh, 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 some of the more simple data structures, if you learn those things, like the concepts themselves, those will apply to any programming language you learn. Any. Any. What's LSL? I've never heard of that. I'm thinking of a script. Cheers. We Tommy, thank you for that follow. And Acid Spark started with basic. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Coding is fun. I like it to be fun. Do I support any repos on GitHub? I don't think so. Nice. Co like, I have. I guess I have just have one of those personalities. Like it, it co like to me, when I start to solve a problem, I like have to solve that problem. I'm like basically OCD addicted to finding the solution, and I don't stop until I get there. Sometimes in an unhealthy way, but yeah, that's that's just how I be. All right, we're almost caught up. We're like, we're trying to get caught up. <laughs> Coding for fun is 100% better. Coding for work can be slow, for sure. It can. What do I think of next? It's cool. Pointers. <laughs> All right. What are we doing? All right, let's look at this. Let's look at this kata that got submitted by uh, Doc. No math and no compilers. Tail calls in JavaScript. Hmm. As a JavaScript user, you know that you're limited in so many ways, so let's break the limit. In this kata, we're focusing on tail call. So the requirement. You're given FD, an array of function descriptions. Your task is to return an array of functions that are able to handle tail calls properly. Each of the elements is a three-length array having the format function name, parameter, function body. So function name, parameter, function body. It's guaranteed that these functions would only invoke each other or built-in functions. Uh, these functions would only be invoked in the tail positions. This does seem very hard. <laughs> uh, what, I, what I'm curious is what tests do they have available for us? Because if they have a lot of tests, that's nice. Um, okay. Check. So they're testing this. They're testing this. Simple tail calls, built-in functions. They've got quite a few tests. So this one, I, while at, on, on first glance, I actually can't even pretend to understand what it's asking for. We could probably figure it out. All right, generic functions. Let's take a look. Uh, metaprogramming, Lisp style generic functions. So uh, disclaimer, okay. In JavaScript, functions are single dispatch. Single dispatch means that the actual code that gets called depends only on the prototype of one parameter, the this parameter. In many other languages, the code that gets executed when you invoke a function depends on the types of all the arguments passed to call the function, not just the class in which the function is defined. For example, in Java, you could have multiple, yeah, so this is like method overloading. In common Lisp, this type of overloading is done with generic functions. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Doing this in JavaScript falls short if you want to dispatch more than one this. Yeah, you basically have to do type checking on the arguments to the function. We've talked about this on stream when we did the jQuery thing. Okay. So what this is, is this actually allows you to define overloadable methods. Um, that could potentially take in different types of arguments. Interesting. I, I like this is uh, this is a one cue. So this is as hard as they get, but it it piques my interest. <laughs> An infinite list. Um, JavaScript arrays can only represent lists of finite length. Your job is to implement the list class, which must be able to represent both finite and infinite lists. Okay. Okay. Empty, iterate, repeat, cycle, replicate from list. You have to implement a bunch of methods. This seems fun. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm for it, because we just have a bunch, bunch of methods to implement. That sounds fun. That's, that's basically like data structures. Uh, and then breaking the ASCII pieces. Yeah. You're given an ASCII diagram comprised of minus signs and plus signs and vertical bars. Your task is to write a function which breaks the diagram and the minimal pieces it is made of. For example, if the input of your function is this diagram, the return value should be the list of that. 
as well as that and that. So you break it up into smaller squares. I don't like this one at all. <laughs> okay. So we have some really, so we have some very hard katas here. It's possible that I will not solve the, like well, I could start these, but I will not finish them tonight. Um, let's vote. Let's vote. And the, vo the vote that we're gonna do right now is, do you want to watch me solve one of those problems? Should I attempt one of these three hard problems? Never give up. Never surrender. Yes. No. <laughs> you have two minutes to decide. Um, do some easier ones, please. 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 Type one in chat. Okay. There's the pull. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay. We got some followers. BG Cryptic, thank you for being here. Um, the Astrobot, I appreciate you. I satisfied, thank you for being here. Uh, Tended Coast, thank you for being here. It's neck and neck. Well, I mean, that's actually winning by 10. <laughs> Big ass one. They are richer content, but it, it alienates a lot of viewers. Um, Cause I, I mean, I always have the feeling that there are more beginner people here than there are advanced people. But I also wanna do things that both, both skill, skill, skill levels will appreciate. But yeah. Um, all right, what do we got? We got a hydrate. Sir Rob, thank you very much. Dr. Vim with the uh, posture check. Thank you, Dr. Vim. Shout out to Dr. Vim. What were you working on? I think that was the same, is that the same title as last time? <laughs> I don't know, what's up, Dr. Vim? <laughs> you got another follow, who was it? LGP, oh, LJP, thank you for being here. Hello one, hello world are pretty quick. Yeah, how to vote. Uh, it should be at the top. I think if you're on mobile, there might, might be a way to, um, I need to stream more at work has been kicking my butt. That's unfortunate. Um, but I'm not really sure <laughs> if you're on mobile, <laughs> there might be a, uh, a way to vote down here or something like that slash vote. And then one, two or three, is it zero based index or one based index? Thank you for the posture check. I have really bad posture. Um, I contemplated setting up my standing area. I've been sitting for like the past month, more than the past month on stream anyways. And Ahiv uh, Brazilian, thank you for that follow. All right, so we're gonna vote now. So <laughs> should I do? Um, so the people have voted, we're gonna do a hard problem. Now we're gonna vote uh, not on which one I should do. Um, which one? List class. So this is like a data structure. Cool. Um, the other one is list, Lisp style generic functions. In, in my reading of it at a high level, this is kind of like method overloading in JS which doesn't exist, but they kind of want us to implement it. That's my understanding. It might be slightly different than that, but that's that. And then this one is uh, tail call optimization. It's kind of like we have to write a little JavaScript interpreter. Like we're not gonna have to parse this code. We should be able to like eval it, but we need to detect if this code calls some itself or calls some other functions or call some other function. Um, okay, there's that one. That's it. All right, those are the three. Three minute vote. Let's go. And thank you to Blink for that follow. Appreciate ya. Thanks for being here. Um, I don't have like a legitimate standing desk. It's just a desk that's really high that I can stand at, but it's not like a special standing desk. Yeah, functional programming is just a totally different mindset you have to be in. Uh, I mean, it's a different way of thinking about problems in general. So, yeah. 
I don't think I'm not gonna attempt the Hello World ones. They might be easy, but we're we're in it. We're in it. We're in it now. <laughs> Let's see what's winning. Cool. Allow bits. I could. I don't. I've gotten enough bits today. <laughs> Democracy. <laughs> um. And Slake, thank you for that hydrate. In it to win it. Well, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for the bits. Which one would you have voted for, Andrew? Yeah, I have a degree in computer science. That's my background. The Invisible Cup. Uh, when I went to university, the computer science program I went through, it's a secret. <laughs> the computer science program I went through didn't have any specialization. But I did take a lot of uh, cybersecurity related courses. So I took uh, an actual course called cybersecurity. I took uh, like more advanced networking um, and like one other one, computer forensics. So I didn't get a specialization, but I did do that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Um, but now that same university that I went to, they offer all, ki all kinds of specialization, like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, uh, informatics, other stuff like that. <laughs> uh, I've thought about it, but uh, you wouldn't like it. So here's, here's the thing. Like, I, I am... A, a, almost every video you see on YouTube that talks about a day in the life is just so highly edited and and like acted and it's not that real like it's it's a day in the life that they want you to see versus an actual day in the life so if you saw my day in the life i think the best way to do it would maybe even just like a time lapse pointed at me at my desk or something like that i don't know i don't know <laughs> yeah exactly here's me sitting at the computer for nine hours um how did i do operating systems and data structures um, oh, I did, I did it, uh, how did I do in them? Um, I did good. Um, all of my computer science classes, I got either an A or a B. Um, so, I did decent, I guess. I don't remember what I got in those classes specifically. <laughs> uh, I just started w writing web apps. Because out of university, uh, my first job, I was actually building desktop applications with C Sharp. Um, and then eventually, I wanted to build websites and so I taught myself web dev but I already had a computer science degree I was already a professional in the real world so at that point it's not it's not it's not like I was starting from scratch teaching myself I already knew a lot about coding yeah I yeah I, I just they're they're disingenuine like it, it, it's very similar to a lot of like lifestyle brands on like Instagram and stuff like that which are it's it's not real <laughs> it's like it's a window into what they want you to see, not necessarily, like, what is actually happening. Which is fine. It's a form of entertainment. That's fine. If that entertain you, entertain you, entertains you, that's great. But I, I don't really like that. And Cube Unit, thank you for the follow. Um, full day of sitting in meetings, yeah. I want to go to that school. Yeah. <laughs> Are we talking about, like, the specializations? Okay, so list data structure one. A week in the life. Yeah. Here's me Googling a for loop for the fifth time. Yeah. What's up, Oscar? And Siddharth, thank you for that follow. Um, is GPA important in your opinion? I mean, a lot of employers look at GPA. Like, the first internship I got, I would not have gotten if my GPA was not as decent as it was. I think I had, like, a 3.5 or something like that. Or maybe a 3.6 on a 4.0 scale. Please explain functional programming. Uh, I've done it before. <laughs> I'm not going to do it right now because what we're about to do is not functional programming. That's not the right link. Videos. Uh, functional. FP? There it is. Uh, this was over a year ago. And that's back when there weren't hundreds and hundreds of people watching me live and I could actually get things done. So in, in, in this video, um, I actually had a few planned lessons. Uh, and one of them specifically is about functional programming. Yeah, you don't got to go to college to be a web dev for sure. Um, all right. Uh, I did WPF. Yeah, uh, I was like one of the only people at my company doing WPF. Everybody was still on WinForms. Um, 
Uh, Fruit says, I'm almost 50, and I want to retrain myself. I used to be a programmer, sysadmin. Now I'm a manager, and I want to retire early and make a new career. I really like Python and JavaScript, but I want to focus on one. What would you recommend? I guess it depends, because you, you can do different things with Python. Like, Python is used a lot in data science, and so if you're interested in that kind of thing, you could do that. I mean, you could use it in scripting, potentially for automation. Um, but with JavaScript, you can... Uh, use what you learn to not only build like front-end websites but also back-ends with Node. So it depends. I'm biased. I would say JavaScript because it just works so well and I really like it, but yeah, it really depends. And life cats, thank you for that hydrate. Cheers. I've heard of Linode. They reached out to me to ask if they could sponsor me, but I said keep your money. <laughs> I, was, I, I, don't do, I don't do sponsorships, but it's, it looks cool. It's very similar to something like AWS. A GPA is a grade point average. 3.6 out of 100. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've tried Go once on stream, actually. And thanks for that follow. Why, not, why don't I do sponsors? I don't know. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I don't know. Okay. Here we go. Bubbly? <laughs> or like, or, um, what do you call it? Um. LaCroix? I, I'd be sponsored by LaCroix. I'm open to that. Okay, so this is the this is the one that we're about to try and solve. Uh, if you all would like to solve it at the same time, feel free. Uh, one of the nice things about Code Wars is you can choose other languages. So, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> so on this particular challenge, you have to use JavaScript. Um, other challenges usually let you pick the language. Um, but essentially, we have to implement a list. And we have a ton of functions that we need to implement. Um, I think, so here's the thing. I'd, I'd be open to a Yoruba sponsor. I've thought about it a lot. Like, for the most part, I just... I don't... I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to, how to articulate my feelings about this. Um, but something like, like the, the Gayaki company that um, makes uh, Yerba Mate... Uh, they're a really awesome company. Um, let's just like go to their website. You can see that they do a lot for the communities where they like source their resources from. It's organic. Um, I don't know. They're a cool company. <laughs> so like companies that have like good moral values and stuff like that. Maybe I'd be open to being friends uh, sponsored by. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, but. This is the code we're about to write. Um, let me do this. Edit. Command. Solving this. Would you take a sponsor for me? <laughs> well, what would I have to do? I think that's the main thing is like, I don't want to, um, I don't, I don't want to be a talking head. Like I don't want to read someone else's advertisement. Um, if I like something, I, I I will mention it because I purely like it, not because somebody paid me to mention it, I guess. Cool. All right. If anybody, anybody comes in and they're like, hey, what is this guy doing? Um, yeah, unbiased is a good way to put it. Type that command, working on it. <laughs> Let them know. That's what we're doing. Um, okay. And also, I think the, the other thing is, um, I don't, I don't, I don't like how the modern, I talked about that this, this morning, but I don't like how the modern web, everything is basically funded by advertisements. Um, would I try out a website? Yeah, but for free. <laughs> I, mean, I would try it and I would give you my honest opinion, but everything we do, our email, we basically pay for it with our data, and, and that data is then used to sell a, a targeted advertisements. Um, YouTube, we watch videos, and that's uh, advertisements basically pay for that. Twitch, I mean, not everyone on Twitch um, actually does monetary things like bits and subs, and so the way that they help pay for Twitch is by watching advertisements. Um, and I would like to, <laughs> I, would, I don't hate money. <laughs> I would like to live in a world where people are not Op like open to just selling their data to be able to do things for free uh, and they realize that 
um, that things aren't free. You're actually selling your data to, yeah, DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo, so that's another company I would actually uh, potentially be open to being sponsored by. But the thing is, DuckDuckGo doesn't sponsor people. Um, they mention on their website that they just contribute to causes that, like, instead of sponsoring people, they just give that money to places that need that kind of money. But what's up, Bitawad? <laughs> Thanks for being here. But how still have fun? But and and that's that's the point I wanted to get to is uh, through community support. So peop, I, I want to I want to be funded by um, you all. So you, if you all find value in my content, um, you're willing to pay a couple dollars a month, like on Patreon or on Twitch, uh, to help me do what I do. Um, and if I can find enough people that support me in that way, I can make a living. I know not everyone can do that. Like that's not a scalable model for every single content creator out there. Um, but it's how I want to do things, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Fruit. Thanks for dropping by. Raid Shadow Legend? What? <laughs> uh, uh, I get it at my local grocery store. That's where I get my drinks. I love to garden. What can I say? <laughs> What's up, man? Yeah, you, you all don't realize you're the product. If you think some... If you think something is free you're the product oh no 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 it's not that they're bad it's just that uh in general um i was just avoiding sponsorships i don't know yeah uh, kesda says uh i'm not a fan of working in ad tech but it pays the bills many of the brightest minds work in ad tech and that is really unfortunate and, and the thing is like there are so many new companies that are starting up and they don't have uh like a, a monetary plan cheyenne thank you for the bits <laughs> Um, they, they, they don't know how they're actually going to make money and they just expect that they're going to make money by slapping ads on it. And it's unfortunate that we're, we're in that. Just wait for Elon Musk's brain chip. Your, your dreams will be sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my front page. Oh, you've showed me that before. I got to get coding. I got to get coding. Okay. This is the problem that we're about to solve. You all know the command that you can run in the chat if somebody asks. What's this person working on? Um, is it bad to be the product? I kind of like have a separate account that can be a product. It, it really depends. It really depends. Uh, a lot of people are okay with it. Um, I kind of want to stop talking about this, but like when I, when I, whenever I disabled uh, ads on YouTube, there were so many people that were just like, I don't, I actually don't mind watching ads, but it's not that, it's not that people mind because if people minded, then nobody would watch YouTube because there are ads all over the place. Um, it's that just basically on principle, I want to try and do something where I don't have to be supported by ads. Generator functions. Oh, oh, how can it be infinite though? You're still limited in memory. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> Advertisements. <laughs> All right, so we have three focus modes. We, we want ads. It's so funny because I actually ran an ad this morning. I was like, what is this? I wanted to see what it would do. I don't know. All right, we got three focus modes. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. Thank you to Big Fig Tree and Razor One, all three with a focus mode. That gives us, what's eight times three? 24? Is that right? Can I math? We've got four. <laughs> Running at that. We've got five. What's five times eight? 40? Tell me the math. To find an infinite list of all odd numbers using, oh, using, yeah, 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 yeah. 40, all right, a 40 minute focus mode. Um, I have a feeling my viewers are gonna drop by like half, but let's get this done. Uh, okay, focus, start, 48 minutes. Thank you for five minutes. <laughs> uh, here we go. So this problem was submitted by Doc. And uh, it is called Class List. It is a 2Q. Actually, I guess we could turn this into YouTube content. Should we? Or at least try to. Because people have mentioned, like, um, focus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end that for a second. <laughs> but, like, if you've, if you've seen my YouTube videos uh, where I did, um, like, six, seven Q katas in 11 minutes, um, people were like, do a one cue. I bet you couldn't do a one cue. And I'm like, if I did a one cue, it would be like an eight hour video. All right, we're going to do YouTube content. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, in this probably 10 hour long video, I don't know, look at the timestamp, however long it's going to end up being, I'm going to attempt to solve this 2Q kata. So uh, this is a Code Wars uh, kata. If you have not heard of Code Wars, you can go to codewars.com to check it out. But they have a lot of different problems. They range in difficulty from 8Q, which is the easiest, all the way up to 1Q, which is the hardest. Uh, and right now, we are in a 2Q. So, like I said, this could take me like 10 hours, but I'm going to try my best. Uh, let's read through the problem, and then I'll bring the code down locally, and we'll start solving it. Uh, and we'll most likely do this um, with, uh, we'll have some tests that we can run, so we'll get that set up as well. But this says, list any way you like it. JavaScript arrays can only, be, can only represent lists of finite length. Your job is to implement the list class, which must be able to represent both finite and infinite lists. It must support the class and instance methods specified below. Methods must not modify their arguments. OK. The internal representation of the list is completely free. With great power, however, comes great responsibility. You need to supply adequate laziness to support infinite list yourself. So infinite elements dot map or infinite elements dot append. Uh, basically, you should be able to chain methods. Um, and each one should return a new infinite uh, list. So there are some class methods. So these are going to be um, uh, static methods. And, and basically, we're going to be doing object-oriented programming. So we'll talk about that. But these are static methods, meaning they exist um, on the class, but not on the instance. And so you have list.empty, iterate, repeat, cycle, replicate, and from list. So we're going to have to implement all of those methods. Function is a function. XS is a list. X is an element. And in is a number. Interesting. Interesting. All right. And then we have instance methods. So these are methods that are uh, on the instance of the list itself that allow you to do things to the contents of that list. So you have head, tail, init, last, length, to list, get, nil, take, drop, cons, append. These are all like we have to implement all of these methods, basically. Um, so we'll do that. And then we have more class methods. So you'll also need to implement some use cases of infinite lists. So list.prime is an infinite list of all prime numbers. Ah, OK, so. <laughs> Um, implement Haskell, <laughs> Doc says. So Doc is actually the person who recommended this problem, but what they mentioned is we might need to do something like generator functions, because a generator function is something that uh, can basically ret uh, yield mo or return multiple values or yield multiple values. So to me, this seems like a generator function. We might be able to solve it without that, because if we have some internal state, um, we could basically create an iterator with internal state that keeps track of what prime you're at, but we'll have to do that. Uh, List.fib is an infinite list of Fibonacci numbers. Um, and then arctan can be written as an infinite sum. What's that about? List.py is an infinite list of increasing numbers of terms. Wow. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're biting off a, a huge, huge chunk right here. We're going to need to solve this. Uh, let's go. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the code down locally. Um, and actually, I'm going to put it in a directory called uh, class list. And inside of class list, we're going to init this, and we're going to use jest for testing. So I'm going to init it with uh, npm. That'll give me a package JSON. And then I'm going to install jest, which is what we will use npm install jest, which is what we'll use for testing and assertions. OK. Now, uh, on Code Wars, when you go into train, you usually you type your code here. This is not big enough for the screen real estate that I have. So we're basically going to take all of these tests that they have written down here, and we're going to pull them into our own test file um, and re uh, rewrite them so that they work with Jest. OK, so need a new file. Let's call this uh, index.js. That's where we're going to put our class li our list class. And then we'll do index.test. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, index.test.js. OK. And we're going to put that code that we got from uh, code wars. And it looks like the only assertion we have is assert deep equals. Cool. Uh, so because we're using um, um, 
jest and we're not using whatever this is. I think this might be uh, some uh, custom test runner with potentially uh, chai assertions. But I'm actually just going to replace all occurrences of uh, test with nothing. Yeah, I guess I could actually that'll be a fun little that's the first challenge is like let's get this code working um, So if I run this right now capital T test is not defined um, So actually if I just do uh, MP MPX jest That'll attempt to run this test file. It's just gonna be like hey test is not defined. Let's define it um, <laughs> So uh, test needs to be an object to get this working and that object needs to have a describe property on it uh, describe itself is a function that takes in uh, the label and some other function. And then it needs to actually call uh, describe, which is the global built into jest, with that label and with that function. I guess technically I could, yeah, doc has it. I could just literally set describe to be describe the global describe. Um, actually, <laughs> this is actually all I need to do. Describe and it. Let's go. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> so now the only, the main error that I'm getting is, uh, wait, not that one. Uh, list is not defined. Cool. So basically all we've done is we've put, um, uh, <laughs> uh, we've put the jest globals describing it on this test object so that way we can call them. Though actually, I don't think jest has an assert deep equals on it. Um, so we do, we will need to define this. So assert deep equals takes in value one and value two. And that just needs to expect value one to be value two. I think that's what we need. But first of all, let's fix this first error, which is list is not defined. The way we can fix that is by actually defining a list. So in my index.js, I'm going to create a class list. And then I'm going to uh, export that out. Um, We could use uh, ES2015 import export syntax, but Jest requires some setup and like Babel if you want to do that. So we're just going to use Node.js export. So export the list, and then over here I can bring that list in. So I've got a list that just comes from uh, index, like that. All right, let's run our tests. Run our tests. Do do do, and we get uh, cannot read property to list of undefined. Um, so you can see right here that the test is failing because it's saying list dot empty dot to list. So that's great. Um, we can fix that. First of all, I'm also going to set up a linter. This is, we're going to be writing a lot of code, so I want I want my linter to be there so it can help me out. Let's set up a linter. Uh, so I'm going to install um, eslint. And so someone in the chat asked earlier, can I explain linting? Linting is basically just style rules for my code. Um, it says things like always use single quotes instead of double quotes. Uh, always have semicolons. Um, it also says maybe don't do those things. It's whatever your preferences are. And yeah, I realize that those should be dev dependencies, but look, this code is never going to be deployed anywhere. So it doesn't really matter <laughs> that they're they're not dev dependencies. But yeah, you're right. In the real world, we would put these as dev dependencies. Okay, uh, next up, I need a linter file. So I'm going to do npx eslint dash dash init. And that is going to ask me some questions. Um, I'm just going to choose some defaults. So I'm using require and exports because we're in Node. I'm not using Reactor View. Um, we're not using TypeScript. My code is actually running in Node. It's not running in the browser. And then I'm just going to use the Airbnb style guide, which is uh, the style guide that I am most comfortable and familiar with. Uh, it has rules like use single quotes, use semicolons, different things like that. And we'll go ahead and install that. So here we go. Airbnb it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and technically, if you want a linter in your project, then you do actually need to install it as a dependency. Uh, the thing to think about is if somebody else brought down your, your code to work on it, um, they would want to um, have the same linter rules and the same linter, linter dependencies, so they'd need to install it. So yes, uh, every JavaScript project I start up, if I want a linter, I have to install it. Um, OK, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a source directory. So that way, uh, I can explicitly say, hey, run the linter on the files in that source directory. So that goes there. That goes there. Uh, and then we're going to set up a test script, which should just say uh, jest. And then we're also going to set up a lint script, which should say eslint 
SRC. So lint all the files in there. Um, so if I do um, npm run lint, I should run the linter. It's going to find a bunch of errors. Yeah, look at this. Um, there should be no space before this parenthesis. A space is required after a comma. Um, what else? That's basically that's the majority of the things that went wrong. Uh, un unexpected use of ampersand. Operator ampersand must be spaced. So these are the kind of rules that it can enforce. And there really are just our rules. Because if you look at the code, like technically, this is still valid JavaScript. And welcome, Faraday. Yeah, welcome to the stream. Um, and so technically, this is still valid JavaScript, but it's not adhering to those rules. So what we're going to do now is we're going to automatically fix anything that can be automatically fixed. And so you can do that with dash dash fix. Um, and that basically, things like uh, missing semicolons, uh, inaccurate spacing, it's, it can fix all of that stuff automatically. So you can see that we went from 459 errors, now we only have uh, 21 errors, and it fixed most of the styling things. So you can see in my editor now, we see a whole lot less squiggly lines, um, because it fixed the spacing, it changed double quotes to single quotes, all that good stuff. Uh, one other thing is right now, describe, it, and expect are like unexpected global variables. So I need to tell my linter that uh, we are in the jest environment. So if I say jest true, it's like, oh, uh, those things um, uh, describe it and expect, I should expect those to be there. So we're fixing things. <laughs> um, and also, I'm kind of just procrastinating because this is going to be difficult, uh, but Let's go. That's good enough for me. There's still some linter errors. Uh, constant is assigned a value but never used. Well, let's fix this first test. List.empty.toList should return an array. So, um, I mean, I really, honestly, I really would like each of these to be in a separate test, but that's fine. We'll do it, we'll do it one at a time. And really, I'm going to comment out everything else, and we're going to uncomment them one at a time and get these tests passing one at a time. So if I run this, oh, not that, not that. <laughs> if I do npm run test, uh, we should see one failing test. Uh, and it says, uh, cannot read property to list of unfind. So we want to fix this error right here. Um, so list.empty needs to be a property. I don't think we can have static properties in Node. Let's try it. So if I try to do a static property uh, called empty, Um, and that alone needs to, so this needs to return an object that has a property called to list, which returns an array. Um, so if that has an object, to list is a function that returns an array. What's up, Bob? It's been a while since I've seen you. Hopefully you're doing okay. Uh, CM Griffin, thank you for the raid. Thanks for being here. Um, we are in the middle of implementing an infinite list. Let's see if this first test pass. Um, List.empty. OK, so first of all, it didn't complain about the static keyword. Yeah, yeah, so Doc is saying static is fine. Um, so that's cool. We can use static. I'm, I'm currently in node version 14. Um, pick the Babel option on Code Wars. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, 10,000 emails. <laughs> all right. so. Um, Actually, I did this wrong. So list.empty is not a function. List.empty is a property. So I actually want this uh, to be a property like that. Uh, my linter is going to hate me. <laughs> uh, and actually, I don't need to return. Uh, list.empty um, is literally an object like that. All right, quick stretch. <clears throat> and I have successfully procrastinated for 10 minutes. <laughs> so that's good. All right. Um, no, no, no. Okay, so no. This needs to be an object that has a to list property on it. So this is an object with to list. Cool. Let's try it. Yeah, we got lots of new emotes. Hey. Hey. Um, replace to be with too strict equal. Serializes to the same string. <laughs> All right, I might have done this wrong. Um... Assert deep equals takes in two values. Empty is an instance of class list. Is it? Um, okay, it might actually be. It seems it seems like 
this is... I thought it was like a... Maybe it's a static property that returns an instance? I could see it. Hey, what's up, Larry? Um, regardless, this is not working, though. Expect value to be value. To list is returning an array. Line seven needs to be too strict equal? Does that do deep equality in jest? Passing test. <laughs> All right, the problem wasn't with our code there. It was actually with the test runner there. Cool. Um, but yeah, I, I think someone might, might, might be making a good point that this actually needs to be an instance of a list instead of just a static property. Well, it's a static property that returns an instance. Um, so actually, if we did this, um, so if I put to list as a method on a list, and then an empty list just creates a new instance of a list, like this. Um, uh, oh, no, no. Wait. Is it a static property, though? Is it a static getter? It might, yeah, can we do that? Can we do a, a getter? <laughs> Hey, Boga, hey, uh, Jufaram, welcome to the show. Um, is that even possible? That seems to work. Would you look at that? Okay, we're, we're actually using a lot of concepts in here. So a static property is a property that's not a property of the instance. It's a property of the class itself. Uh, a getter is basically like a computed function. So even though this is a function, we can access it like a property from the outside world. Yeah. If list empty, list.empty equals new empty list. Is it a singleton though? Yeah, I, I, so I don't think it's a singleton. I think, it, to me, it seems like whenever we call it, we just get an empty list, which is a, a new list that has nothing inside of it. Right? Right? <laughs> I don't know. We'll keep going, though. So that, that test passed. Uh, let's move on to the next test. The lists are immutable. Okay, so uh, this next test, the first failing thing is from list is not a thing. Um, so we need to implement that from list takes in some data and then we need to do something with it. Um, I think we need an, we need an instance property that is like the data that we're, that we have. Um, and so like if we create a constructor that when you create an instance of a list, we say, say like this dot data starts off as an empty array. I, I realize that eventually we have to make this infinite, but I think this could actually work because then if we're passing in a list, then I could say uh, this dot data equals data. Uh, and from list is a, I guess that's also a static property. So this is a, a static function that we can call from list, takes in the data to list, now returns an array, and now this should return uh, this dot data, like that. Kata, uh, katas <laughs> is what you want. <laughs> and if you also, if you do uh, exclamation mark working on, you can get a link to this kata. Cannot read property to list of undefined. So from list, ah, from list needs to return an instance of a list. Yeah, 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 because it's a static property. There is no this inside of a static property. So uh, this needs to return um, a new list that has data as the initial property. Um, and we could say that in the constructor, if you pass in data, um, if you don't pass it in, we default to an empty array, and then we just set it equal to there. Can I make them run automatically, please? No. <laughs> I mean, I can. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> All right, that test is passing. Um, I'll, I'll make them run automatically just to make you happy. <laughs> there you go. So we have two passing tests. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, so from list to list seems to work. So that's great. Uh, from list dot head. So now we need to implement a head. 
And head is a function that returns the first element in the array. Um, so we now need a, an instance method called head, and that just returns this dot data at zero. Passing test, great. All right. Um, if we call head on an empty array, we should get undefined. That should already be passing. Cool. Uh, we now need a function called tail. So list from list, it calls tail, and then you're able to call to list on the tail. <laughs> so is, is this telling me that the tail function actually removes the last property from an array and it returns itself? Okay. A wild constructor function appears. <laughs> I think it removes the last value. That's what I'm gonna assume it does. So when we call tail, um, we can say like this dot data dot pop. That will actually remove the last value. And then we return this. Because if we return this, um, that returns the list itself, and then now the list no longer has, wait. It returns all but the first? Oh, tail is the dual of head. I see, so I did this wrong. Uh, <laughs> so when I say tail, it actually removes the first removes the first value. So I should be able to do shift. That removes the first value in the array. Look at that, passing test. So remove the first value in the array, and then return the instance itself. And when we call to list on the instance, the first value is gone, so we just get back two and three. All right. That should still pass, that's fine. The original list should be unmodified. Do we have any tests for that? Don't mutate the list. Okay, I won't. I can I cannot mutate the list. Uh, this dot data equals this dot data dot slice one. So uh, remove the first value in the array. Should still pass. Cool. So we are no longer um, this dot is head and tail supposed to return a list object. So tail returns the list object. Head from the test just return the first value. So yeah, this actually creates a copy of the array. So that's fine. Okay, so, gener yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the tests to make me use generators because we don't need them yet. Uh, all right, so now we need a get function where you can pass in an index. That should be easy enough. So get takes in an index, and then we should be able to return this dot data at uh, that index. Oh, return a new list? Oh, because it doesn't want to, it's not the previous instance. I see. This is like immutable OOP, which is interesting. But I like it. Nice. The problem description has good def definitions of the functions and return types. Well, that would have been good to know 10 minutes ago. No. Um, let's see. List without its first element or an empty list for an empty list. List without its last element or an empty list. Okay, but regardless, let's keep going. List in functional programming. <laughs> What's up, the real Vigon? Uh, all right, so we can get, I believe all of these will work. So we, we should be able to get any index and pass them back. Passing test, so that's great. Um, now we need to implement take. Take is not a function, and so take will basically slice the list up to a certain number of items, and I guess return a new list. The first at most in elements of the list may be negative or greater than list length. Uh, good, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a wedding here reference. Um, this library is called Jest, but I, so I'll show you really quick. We basically, uh, we wrote this little helper here that converts this test dot syntax into actual Jest functions. Um, but we copy and pasted this from Code Wars, which is why you see all of that. Okay, so uh, we want take. Now take, 
takes an account. And actually, um, yeah, so it takes an account. And we re need to return a new list where we slice the data. So we go from zero up to count. Like that. This dot data is not a function. Oh, this dot data dot slice. Count. Zero count. Passing tests. This is like this I feel like it's gonna get a whole lot harder pretty soon. Uh, right now we're just implementing the methods, but once we need to start getting into more complex things. Okay, suggestion. Skip ahead to list repeat and list cycle to avoid having to backtrack. Okay. Um You're, you know what? You're right. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. Because basically, um, this is testing that we're actually using generators f for our uh, for our data instead of just a plain old array. Okay, so now we get a, a failing test. Uh, list dot repeat take ten to list. So basically, this this is. If we say repeat, that creates an infinite list of ones. That's crazy. It's basically like you're telling you're you're telling it that this is a list that has the value one inside of it, but it's just going to be one forever, no matter what indice you get from it. And then take. Um, essentially, instead of doing like a slice, it does an iterator up to that value. Infinite list. Infinite list. All right, let's do it. So list dot repeat. Um, takes in a value. Let's figure this out. So uh, that needs to be a static method. Um, so the um, the if you're new to like object oriented programming, kind of the difference between a static method and an instance method is that a static method can be called from the class itself, right? We don't have to say new list and then call repeat. We're actually accessing it from the class itself. So this is a static method called repeat. Static uh, repeat value, and that needs to return some new list with the repeated value. Maybe we take in an options object? Like that. Um, let me take a look at these other tests, though. So repeat, iterate, replicate. New list, function generator, <laughs> num drop, num take. So this is our constructor that takes in a function generator. Okay. Um, I, okay, I think that's a good hint. So, do, does the problem description actually tell us the, the constructor signature? It's entirely up to me. Okay, I, I could see this working though, um, because a generator function would be the internal thing that is used to get the actual values. Let's just do this, and then that way, whenever we say, uh, um, which one was it? Repeat. The generator function here uh, is actually can you can't have an async arrow function, can you? Um, while true yield value. <laughs> uh, how does this work? Start, wait. Do I have to create it outside? Uh, Jelly Woot with the five gifted. Thank you so much, Jelly Woot. Yield. <laughs> oh, function star. 
And then I think this is just complaining because I don't have a... Wait. No. What is the star function? I will tell you. It's a generator function. So it's a really weird concept that you honestly probably will never need outside of coding challenges. There, there are basically... Uh, there are other ways of doing this in JavaScript, um, but it makes a lot of sense here. Oh, you can actually create an instance of a generator function. Yeah, I mean that's what I that's what I have, Doc. But I want to name it like that. Um, repeater like that. And this is basically like, don't do an infinite loop. Oh no, it's not. Okay. <laughs> So this is this is this is the weirdness. So, a generator of function is a function that you can invoke, uh, which is basic. It, it's an it's an iterator. When you invoke it, you're going to get back um, not just the value that was returned. You're going to get back some information about it, that invocation. Um, you're going to get back a value. You're also going to get back uh, whether or not the generator is complete, meaning is it done generating values. And so because this is basic basically an infinite loop. Each time I call this function, we're just going to get back the exact same value. But I could call this function a hundred different times, and it's basically just yielding the same value every single time I call it, and it's never done yielding. Um, if I had something like this, this, this generator function could only be invoked once. We'd get back the value, and then the next time I invoke it, um, basically, it would say we're all out of values. But because I wrapped it in a while true loop, it's going to generate forever. Yeah, so it pauses the execution. It basically returns this value, pauses the execution, and then the next time you call that generator function, it resumes the execution. And in this case, it's just going to yield it again and again and again and again. Cool. So now our, our, um, our constructor takes in a generator function. And instead of just having data, we basically need to use our generator to um, create the data whenever we're doing things like get or take or, or to list or different things like that. Um, so let's look back at uh, generator functions. I don't want this generator function. I want the actual... Uh, function star. Here we go. Um, so, yeah. So you invoke it. That actually gives you back a generator. And then on that generator, you can call dot next, dot next, dot next, dot next. And that gives you each next value. Um, OK. Yeah, it's weird. I'll figure this out. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> so. Uh, now that we have the function generator, um, I think instead of data, I'm going to do something like this dot generator equals function generator invoke. So we now have an instance of that generator. Um, and then when I need to get a value, five a.m. Too too late to learn about generator functions. So I could also do const x of generator. So each value inside of the uh, the generator, you can iterate it. OK. Uh, but now that breaks all of, our, all of our other functions. Actually, what I'm going to do is let me just get this working, and then we're going to come back to this stuff that we were working on before. Um, so um, now take doesn't make sense anymore, because take basically needs to iterate our generator uh, up to 10 to get each of the values. Um, so. Uh, take uh, this dot data is no longer a thing. Let me comment out all these other functions. What I'm thinking we do here is basically um, we have our uh, we can call it data. That's going to be an array, um, and we can say for value in this dot generator data dot push value. I believe. And we return the data. Um, or value of.
Okay. Um, can I do this? My linter is just saying iterators and generators require regenerator runtime, which is too heavy for this guy to allow them. <laughs> uh, separately, no restricted syntax. I'm just going to disable this. Um, disable no unrestricted syntax for this entire file. Okay. And we'll say uh, if data.length is equal to count, we then break out of here and return data. All right, does this work? To list is not a function. Okay, so <laughs> um, this actually needs to return in, so we have data. This actually needs to return an instance of um, the list. Where do I implement the count? Yeah, right here. So basically, because uh, otherwise this would have just, because that generator never stops, because that generator just keeps giving out ones, giving out ones all day, uh, we need to stop it at some some point. Okay, that's a good hint, Doc. Thank you very much. Um, okay. I get it now. I get, I get it. And so that, that, okay. Okay, Doc is giving me lots of hints, but that's fine. Doc is kind of like co-star of the coding garden. <laughs> but to do something like this, we actually need to know uh, where, like, where we start and where we end. Um, and start is always, like, can default to zero, and start and end can always default to zero. So basically, what we need to do is uh, take needs to return a new list uh, with this dot generator but it has a start of zero and an end of count, right? Right. Now, uh, when we take these values in, we're going to set them on the instance. So this dot start equals start, and this dot end uh, equals end. So now we have a specific generator. We have a generator that has a specific start and end. And actually, end is not zero. End is uh, infinite. It just goes forever <laughs> by default. But in this case, it's going to start at zero and go to 10. Yeah, it, Jules has it. It goes into, into infinity. But now this function we need to implement, which is uh, to list, that's the thing that actually does the iterating and turns it into an array. So I, I got rid of my stuff, but basically we have uh, result equals an array, and then um, we need to say for value of this dot generator. Um, and really, we go from start. So we'll say, um, do I get access to the the um, the index inside of a for of? I don't know, but I could say a result dot push uh, value, and we'll say if uh, result dot length is equal to this dot uh, end, which is th this case is going to be ten. Then we just break out and we return the result. Function generator is not a function. Oh, oh, I'm, cr I'm, I'm passing in the instance of the generator instead of the actual generator itself. So, um, I mean, I think we need to store it. So we keep track of the function generator and we also say, um, that. So we create an instance of it whenever we start it up, but here, that way we can actually pass in the original generator function, which was this, and not the instance of the generator. Like that. Passing test. What do you know? <laughs> so Doc says, I would push the iterate and generate items logic into a separate function from the make and array of it. Yeah, I'll, 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 uh, that's part of the refactor. Um, so Pretty soon, we're going to be doing this a lot, so we'll, we'll refactor that out. Value.value value and value.done. Um, however, I mean, no, this works. This is giving us back an array of ones. Because the of, for, and a for of loop will give me the actual value from the, from the generator instead of the object, which has a value property. Right? I don't know. Let's go. Let's do the next thing. 
<laughs> so repeat two, take 10. This should just work as well. Great. Um, repeat three, take 10. This should also work easily. Great. Um, iterate. Ah, okay. So this says iterate increment zero, take 10. Um, increment is initialized. Oh, increment is a function that takes in a value and then adds one to it each time. All right, so now we need, we need an iterate function. First off, iterate is not a function. Let's make iterate a function. Uh, is it a, yeah, it's a static method, just like repeat. So we'll say uh, static iterate uh, takes in the iterator function and the increment, well, this is like the increment function. What are we getting passed in? Getting the inc increment function and the start, I believe. Um, cool. So this needs. Basically, we we got to do something similar. So we need to create a generator. But uh, this is not a repeater. This is an incrementer, um, and it's not. Yeah, it's kind of like wall true. <laughs> we basically need we need to keep track of. Um, current uh current so the current value is equal to start that's how it starts off and then on each iteration we set uh after each iteration we set current equal to the increment function with the current value and we actually return current so <laughs> this this is our generator let's see if this works <laughs> i can't believe that works <laughs> it's magic it's magic, but bas basically, uh, this is a function that takes in a value and then returns that value plus one, at least in this case. Um, and it's, they gave us a starting point. So our generator starts there, and it, it, it's similar in that it yields values forever, but each time it yields, it actually yields the incremented value. Yeah, passing test. Um, so that's that's super interesting. And so the uh, the incrementer that it's passing in is this. So technically, you could pass in a function that um, does really anything with the value as long as it was, yeah, I think that's the thing. The way I've implemented it is, yeah, you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, however, this function is the incrementer. It takes in a value and adds one. So yeah, okay, moving right along. Uh, we need to do list.cycle. What the heck is this? Um, so, uh, We'll first need to implement from list. And I think, yeah, okay, I, so this, I, we're think this is fun. We're learning about generators because basically if we say from list, we actually can, like the, um, the generator function that we create will basically yield each of the values from the list. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I understand why. It's just that it was actually so imp simple to implement that it it's perplexing that it was that simple to implement. But yeah, it's, I mean, there's our incrementer function, iterate, iterator function. Oh, you're right. This isn't necessarily the incrementer. This is like the, what do we call this? Um, I mean, really, it's just a function. And this is the iterator. I mean, it's just a rename, but I think it's, it's better. Wait. Yeah, is iterator a reserved keyword? <laughs> I think it is. Um, iterator function. And we can call this the repeater function. Five a.m. in Germany. Well, thanks for hanging out. Um, function generator is not a function. But why? Yes, test is failing. What's up, Jitter Ted? <laughs> you might have been here already. I think I might have missed your missed your chats. Uh, list index line five. What did I do wrong?
Okay. <laughs> Just stop by to drop some test fails. Well, thank you. Um, cool. So this is actually failing because list.cycle is... I, I don't know why we're getting this error, but list.cycle isn't... I thought it wasn't a thing. I don't have a cycle function yet, do I? Yeah, I don't. So I, I need to... Um, I need to implement the cycle, cycle function. Uh, and cycle takes in a list. Let's read about it in the problem description. Like, what exactly does cycle do? An infinite list of repetitions of the list equals xs if xs is infinite. So, oh, um, so uh, we're going to need to create a generator, but um, because we say take 10, it actually just keeps repeating one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So even though this list is only size three, it just wraps around back to the beginning. Okay. So first of all, I kind of just want to implement uh, from list because we don't have that implemented yet. Right? <laughs> it's like a waltz beat in three, four, three, four time. Um, three, four time. Um, okay. Regardless. Okay. <laughs> we need a, a cycle function. Um, Static cycle. This takes in, it actually takes in a list. And then we're going to need a generator function. We'll call this the, cyc the cycler function. And um, Basically, we just need to do um, for value of something like list dot entries, and entries returns a generator, something like that. Or no, no, no. we can just use the generator. Grab the generator of the list. And then we yield that value. But actually, we need to create a new instance of the function generator every time. So when we reach the end, yield star list yields an array one at a time. Well, I don't want to yield the array. I want to yield each value in the array. Is that what you mean? It yields each value inside the array? Welcome back, everyone. That was a long, that was a long, long, uh, um, what do you call it? Focus mode. It was long focus mode. Okay. Um, yield star is how you call one generator from another. I'm thinking I need to actually create an instance of the generator, not when, not here, but I need to be able to create it every time. Um, so like, this is what I'm thinking. We'll say like list.generator equals list.function generator. So we do that. So every time we wrap, wrap back around, why is this complaining? Um... While true yield list.entries. Oh, okay. And then list.entries itself is uh, is an iterator. Oh, we have another focus mode. <laughs> I think I think I need to catch up though, and then we'll go back into focus. Um, all right. We'll get that working in a second. Oh. No. Okay. From list, do I already have that? Is that why it's break breaking? Oh, I do. That's why it's breaking. Ugh. <laughs> 
uh, and Shadow with the 500 bits. Uh, very few channels can make coding enjoyable after a whole day of software development. Thank you so much, Shadow. I appreciate that. Uh, we're doing some pretty complex stuff. I would like literally never do this in my day job. So it's pretty fun. Um, but this is why it's breaking because <laughs> from list was assigning data, which isn't a thing anymore. Um, okay. Um, so we have an array of data. We need to create an iterator that iterates the data. List function. Um, really, it's just like for value of data yield value. We pass that in. List.generator is not a function. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, I actually don't, yeah, I don't need to invoke it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just throwing code at it and it's passing my test. That's fine. We're going to come back to it. There's a lot of uh, suggestions in the chat, like yield star. I've never actually used yield star. And so yield star is basically uh, syntactic sugar for uh, this, the value, the fact that I'm Iterating over each value in the array and then yielding each individual value. If I just change this to uh, yield star data, that will yield each value. Yeah, test still passed. Look at that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And then I guess I can change this too. I could say uh, yield star list.generator. Should be yeet. We, we, need a, we need a compiler macro where we can just say yeet instead of yield. Yeet. Yeet. No, it didn't work. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so the, the we talked about this a little bit ago. Yeah, yeet, we got to yeet that data one at a time. Um, I love throwing code at tests and worrying about cleanup later. Yeah. And we're going to do that. I'm going to catch up on all the follows and everything, and then we're going to come back and refactor. Um, but <laughs> write a Webpack plugin that replaces yeet with yield. That, that could be fun. Uh, but yeah, a star is actually a generator function. So uh, I will leave you with some resources. It's actually quite a bit to wrap your mind around. Um, but the idea is it's a function that can potentially return multiple values. And it's a function that can be called multiple times. So a generator function, uh, this is an example of a generator function. The first time we call this function, it's going to return the value that was passed in, because that's our first yield. And whenever you see yield, that's actually that actually pauses the execution of the function. And then if we invoke that uh, generator again, it's actually going to yield the input value plus 10. So it's at this point, it's basically returned two different values. And then if we invoke that generator again, it won't return anything because it's done uh, generating. It has it can no longer yield values. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> The, the way we see it working here is we create a new generator, and the way you invoke the generator is saying generator.next. Um, and so generator.next uh, will give you the, the first yielded value, because that's the first time we call it. And if you say dot value, you get the actual thing that was yielded. Um, if you don't say dot value, you actually get an object that tells you whether or not the iterator was done. Um, so yeah, this yields 10 the first time it was called, and then 20 the next time. And so the way that we're using this is to, to create w infinite lists. So we basically have a while true in multiple places. We're, we basically are creating generators that can uh, generate values forever, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, till the end of time. Um, but the reason why this doesn't, my code just doesn't like freeze is because we're only yielding a certain number of values from that list. We're not just like yielding forever. We yield whatever we need. So like some of the functions we're doing are like take 10. So this actually only invokes the generator 10 times. So even though it's a while true, Jelly Woot! <laughs> Thank you, Jelly Woot. Here, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll read your message. Um, I just recently transitioned into a full remote dev position, and I need a good chair to sit on in my home office all day. What do I use? Um, I'm actually not liking the chair that I'm using. So this chair. I don't sit in this all day. This is a decent chair for sitting all day in. This is an Ikea Marcus. Um, how do you spell it? Marcus, like that? 
Yeah. They don't make this color anymore, but it's a decent chair. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's only, here's the thing. I say it's only a $200 chair. Uh, really, really nice, extremely ergonomic chairs sell for, like, thousands of dollars. Um, yeah. Co-routines. <laughs> CJ's chair in black, and I sit in all day. Yeah, so I think this is, like, a good entry-level ergonomic chair. Um, somebody mentioned Miller Herman. Yeah, I've seen these before. Like, I've worked in some workplaces where they literally had, like, $800 chairs. Um, yeah, these are some, some serious ergonomic chairs. Yeah. Um, how much are they? So let's just look. A thousand dollars, but it's it's like state of the the art ergonomics. Like I've I've sat in chairs like this before. Um, but yeah, this chair is fine. Um, I actually also have like a really cheap, uh, like gaming racing chair that I got at Micro Center. <laughs> Se several thousand, <laughs> you sweet summer child. <laughs> Oh, and actually, I forget the name of it, but there, um, there was like a, let's, let me just search for images of ergonomic chair, because there was like a really nice one that I used to have, this might be it? Um, I used, to, I had it at work, and it was like an $800 chair, but then I left that work, but I found the same chair at Goodwill for $20. It's literally like an $800 chair. Um, this might be it? I don't know. Yeah, you can you can go deep if you start looking at these chairs. Um, I mean, I so this this green chair that I'm sitting in, I didn't steal it from work. I actually asked if I could have it have it because we have like twenty extra chairs just laying around. So my work actually gave it to me. Um, but I'm talking about my my previous jobs that I've had. Um, I am streaming on a Windows computer. I have an HDMI capture card, so I'm coding on a Mac, streaming on a Windows computer. If you do exclamation mark gear, you can see a, a links to all the stuff I use, but if you scroll all the way down, there's a diagram of how it's all hooked up. This actually might be what I have. I mean, I think this thing sells at Walmart, um, but I paid like $150 for it. it it's not a nice chair, and my butt hurts because I was sitting in it all day. Uh, see, Bigot! Twitch Prime Resub! So happy to find your channel. I've learned a lot in the short time I've been here. Um, you've got even more. Excited to start cybersecurity courses in the fall. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm remote now because of uh, COVID. Um, before that, I was, like, remote half of the week. G a gaming chair. I realize we're sidetracked. We are very sidetracked right now. I think I have, like, a cheaper version of this one. Zoom. Yeah. It's, like a ch it's a cheap gaming chair. Um, <laughs> I use a folding chair. <laughs> chair detour. <laughs> if you use a gaming chair for non-gaming, it voids your warranty. Yeah. So, I mean... <laughs> Actually, if you, um, oh, here, okay, I have, I have a challenge for you. The first person to find a YouTube live stream where I was sitting in a chair like this gets a gifted sub. Go. Go now. And while you're doing that, um, I am going to look at the follows and acknowledge all of the follows that happened. Uh, Lex Peace, thank you very much for the follow. Uh, Bruzag, thank you for the follow. Uh, Rudy Kiro, thank you for the follow. Uh, Abuel Wafa, thanks for following. Uh, Joakurdi, thank you for following. Oh, and for those of you that want to participate in this, uh, go to my YouTube channel. Go here. <laughs> Coding Garden with CJ. Um, wait, that's not it. Oh, did you find it, NovaScript? Let me see. Oh, yeah, it's literally the first live stream I ever did. I was sitting in that chair. NovaScript wins it. All right, NovaScript already has a sub, though. Let's see this. What's this one? Yeah, that wasn't the first, though, because this was literally the first ever Coding Garden stream. Let's go Let's go take a stroll down memory lane. Uh, this is before I had a green screen or a blue screen. Um, 
Look at me. It's me. It's me in my bedroom. I didn't know how to how to start the intro music before actually showing my face. Um, and so this was streamed February 19th, 2018. Um, it now has close to 7,000 views, but let's look at the analytics. I'm going to tell you how many people actually watched live. Because I it was probably like two, if that. Um, these stats are usually wrong. Analytics. Zero concurrent viewers. <laughs> I don't think anybody watched it live. Um, right? Wait, what is... Maybe this is wrong. Maybe four. Okay. A max... I don't know why it said zero concurrent. <laughs> I think it was a max of five people that watched that stream two years ago. Cool. NovaScript. Choose someone in the chat and I will gift them a sub. <laughs> you opened that same chair up on AliExpress. <laughs> uh, which one was this? Uh, that was an older one too, but I, I mean, it's still the same chair. Yep, and this was actually the second one. The second one. And what's this one? Yeah, that's the second one too. It's the same ID. Uh, I just finished Hack Reactor a couple months ago. Wish you were our instructor. <laughs> You can always come watch me on Twitch. Yeah, that hair. Look at that guy. <laughs> What's up, Alka? <laughs> uh, right now, my hair is like down to here. Ish. Have my eyes changed? I don't know. Um, I've never seen more hairstyles on one person than I have on CJ. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> Wait, Alka, you're not subbed? I feel like you're subbed. <laughs> All right, I'm going to acknowledge these followers. Uh, DevM, thank you for the follow. Uh, Low and Hers, thanks for following. Uh, Joby, thank you for following. Uh, Marku Limpo, Limpio, thank you for following. Uh, Elikaira, thanks for the follow. Das Wolf, Wolfman, thanks for following. Virtual Sanity, thank you for the follow. Captain G8, thank you for following. Space Incorporated, thanks for the follow. Tech Preta, thank you for following. Uh, 89 Luca, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Rally Pat, thanks for following. Uh, Important Barracuda, I appreciate you. Uh, Kuju, thanks for following. Uh, Memphis, thanks for being here. Uh, Running Dad, Running Running Dead, thank you for the follow. Uh, Marcos, thank you for the follow. And uh, Shaniqua, thanks for the follow. Did uh, Did NovaScript choose someone? <laughs> I tried sending it first, but test first. I got 18 viewers on my first stream. Nice, Life Cats. What do you stream? I'm curious. Do you stream coding or um, other things? I choose Fetty's channel. Nice. <laughs> uh, I guess you're streaming in Russian. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll give two. Um... Who is this? They've sent two messages here. How are you streaming on a Mac? Cool, yeah, yeah. you're gonna get a gifted sub. Give me two seconds. No, that's the wrong thing, this thing. Um, and hopefully you found that page. I'll pull it up in a second if you haven't. Yes, yes. <laughs> Stream is not ending, no. Hopefully I type that username right. Let's see. <laughs> We've only just begun. Congrats to Fetty's channel with, with the gift itself. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a quick break, uh, and then we'll come back for another focus mode, and we'll get this done. First of all, I just want to thank Doc for introducing this problem to me because we're doing some serious generator stuff here, and it's not actually as hard as you, as you would have thought, you know? You know? But also, uh, if you go to that website, coding.garden slash gear, uh, this is all the stuff I stream used to stream. Um, actually, this, this right here is a MacBook. That's what I'm coding on, but it's connected into an HDMI capture card which is in turn plugged into like a Windows gaming computer. And the Windows gaming computer is the thing that OBS is running on. But if you scroll all the way down, um, you can see a diagram. So this is my MacBook. 
Um, it's got a, it's plugged into an HDMI capture card, which is plugged into my gaming computer. Uh, this microphone is plugged into a mixer, which is plugged into a USB audio thing, which is plugged into my Windows computer. I have a camcorder right there, which is plugged into an HDMI capture card, which is plugged into my computer. Uh, and then it all it all just works. There's a bunch of OBS browser overlays and stuff like that. Uh, we are in the basement. Yes. <laughs> Wait, what what emote is that? Oh, it's from an actual channel. I was like, that doesn't look like better Twitch TV. Uh, I think the keys on my keyboard are like brown switches. I need to take a break. I need to stretch too. Um, what else do we got in Redemptions? Uh, who's that from? Feels amazing, man. I didn't even know. Okay, I guess it's a global emote, which is why I've never seen it. Cool. <laughs> Nova script. Thank you for that posture check. Chad with the C with the hydrate. Cheers. Zinc Commando with the hydrate as well. Cheers. All right. When we come back, we're going to do focus mode and we're going to solve that. I think we're actually going to finish. I, I, I feel confident that we can finish this 2Q today. It's not going to be a multi-stream thing. We're going to get it done today. Um, he does. He just doesn't like these stairs. These stairs are very steep and slippery, but he actually will go up the stairs at work because they're carpeted and they're not as steep. Get gooey. Um, I just use the one that's built into VS Code, but I've used uh, Source Tree before. Just pretty nice. Uh, Shadow, with a thousand biddies. Gotta hop off. Have a good night. Thank you so much, Shadow. Thanks for being here. Have a wonderful evening. We appreciate you. Yeah, you've sent a lot of bits today. <laughs> I appreciate you. Tomorrow, one you. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to take a five-minute break. When I come back, we're going to keep on coding. Um, while I'm away, be nice to each other. Here, I'm going to clear out the, the drop game. Uh, so you all can uh, drop while I'm away. I'll also put on some music. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, the drop game... 1,000 stones. <laughs> the drop game allows you to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, see you in five minutes.
Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, had a good break. Murdoch is over here with the, the uh, Panzer animation. That's pretty awesome. Thank you, Murdoch. Um, I have myself here a, uh, a no-bake cookie that my partner made. And I try my best to eat it. It's very crumbly, but it tastes really good. Okay, GM. You can see the music here. Oh, here. <laughs> How are you all doing? Did you, did you do okay without me? Um. It's slower and more so No, it's not that kind of stream. Uh, Mindcab, thank you for following. Lucas, thanks for the follow. And Stu Stutz.dev, thanks for being here. I mean, technically my break is over. The music was loud. Sorry. Sorry about that. I am going to finish this before we start coding again. Sorry, everyone. Didn't mean for the music to be that loud. <laughs> Content. Did you all just find out that I have those um, um, Naruto run things on there? <laughs> I added those to uh, Better Twitch TV. Cool. Wow. <laughs> That's some really fast beans, Smiley, in your status. And thank you, uh, Funrari. Funerary? Thanks for that follow. Loud music doesn't mean not nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually forgot, but Friday... Friday is code review stream. So, we have a channel redemption for... Um, oh, did I just totally remove it? I think it's 10,000 seedlings. Um, actually, well, did I eat dinner? No, I had a really late lunch, I guess. Oh, no, I did eat dinner. Never mind, I ate dinner. Yeah, I got partnered, um, on last Monday? Last Monday. Um, but Friday is a code review stream, so if you have code that you'd like me to review, and you have 10,000 seedlings, you can redeem it, uh, for a code review. Yeah, you don't submit it. Smashing the content. <laughs> nice, nice doc. Yeah, it's a channel redemption. Um, yeah, yeah, product launch was good. Um, we actually, so it was, a, it was a soft launch because the, the app that we're building had different types of users. And so it was a soft launch for the type of user that is creating content for the, for the product, for the platform. Um, but yeah, it went good. It, it was mainly also we had, we had a demo today to demo all of the latest features. Too embarrassed? You shouldn't be too embarrassed. I'll, um, I'll actually point you to the last time that it happened. Um, I mean, in, um, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. So uh, Lakshman um, asked for a code review, and I didn't. We didn't know it or realize it at the time, but um, is this the one? He had actually coded the entire thing on his mobile phone. And so, first of all, we were all just amazed that he was even able to do it. Um, but he was, he was very new to coding, which is totally fine. Um, let's see. Excuse me. Yeah, is this it? Pretty sure this is it. Yeah. And so he's totally new to coding, so all of his code was in a single file, and he really just wanted advice. He was like, I know I can make it better, just give me some tips and maybe some resources that I can look into to make this code better. And we did, it was totally fine. Nobody made fun of him for his code. We were all like, first of all, we were super amazed that he wrote it on a mobile phone. But second of all, he's just trying to learn, and, uh, and that's okay. So don't, don't be afraid. He coded it on his phone, <laughs> yeah. 
Ah, that's pretty cool. Learning Python and code. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Seafig. Um, it was a good. It was a pretty good stream. Insanity. No, like uh, he he lives in India, so he might not have access to, um, like a computer lab or a laptop or something like that. Um, I'm sure that he most likely uses like a Bluetooth keyboard or something, right? I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Revive new. Come on. <laughs> Come on, revive new. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> You're too kind. You're way too kind. 20 gifted subs. <laughs> the goat is back. <laughs> oh, buddy. I, I don't I don't even know what to say. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we gotta bring up the newts. That's all, that's what we gotta do. I gotta start up the newts. <laughs> we need it to be automated. It's for some reason it's not automated yet. It's on the wrong wrong IP address. There we go. There are the newts. We're just going to keep that on for like 30 minutes. Uh, there can be newts crawling on my screen while I code, but thank you so much, Revive Newt. I appreciate you. I don't, I don't know what I did to deserve all of your support, but I really appreciate it. Um, thank you very much. So much. Can we get some hearts? Can we get some hearts in the chat? <laughs> um... Well, the newts aren't automatic yet. The newts need to be an automatic. And actually, we can increase the number of newts. We actually coded this. We coded this a week ago? Yeah, right now there are only 10 newts. What about 30 newts? There we go. <laughs> 30 newts. <laughs> Greg, with the hearts. <laughs> 311 newts. Wait, is that how many gifted subs? No. Oh. Wait, what's 311? That's insane. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's... I don't... I don't, I don't want to encourage Revive Newt to keep gifting me. So, like, I appreciate it. But, like, I'm not, like, fishing for gifts. I, yeah, I appreciate it. 311 total gifted subs. Wow. What do we do, everyone? <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> um. Wait, I want to see that message. 311. All right, we're going to go with uh, 311. Um, it's going to get weird, but here it comes. Ah! Uh, probably a rip bit rate. <laughs> Fear of Murdoch, thank you for the 100 bits. Look at all those bits! <laughs> rip encoder. All right, yeah, we're going to go back down to 30. <laughs> bit rate, no! <laughs> all right. I, I really appreciate Revive New. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, I think let's let's go down. If we go down to like four, then they'll just kind of be chilling, and like random. Yeah, they'll be, just be on random places on the screen. I'm okay with leaving that on for the rest of the stream. Um, okay, we got some follows. Um, Poseidon, thank you for the follow. Brian Johansson, thank you for the follow, and uh, Panic Ketchup. <laughs> That's a cool name. Thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, we need it. I don't do it for the nudes. 
can see Piggot. Thank you very much for the hydrate. Cheers. Totally unrelated. Does anybody know of a website that keeps track of how often emotes are used? Like, can I see which of the emotes in my channel are, um, are used and how often? Stream elements? <laughs> nice job, Alka. I guess I have stream elements. I'll look into that later. Okay. All right. Uh, we've got a focus mode and a hydrate, which we missed somehow. Leo, think about that hydrate. Let's go back into focus mode um, and solve this problem. <laughs> so for, for those of you that are just joining us, uh, this is the... Um, this problem here... Uh, class list is the pro is the code kata that we're working on. It's basically creating a list data structure that allows for infinite lists. Infinite. Infinite. And we're using uh, generator functions to do that. All right. Total messages. Top Twitch emotes. Oh, look at that. Coding. Well, I mean, it would make sense that these are the top used ones because they've been around the longest. Um... Yeah, and we can see after the we got the name change because we're no longer coding five, we're now just coding. Content obviously gets spammed, so there's a lot of those. Yeah. How do I see just my channel emotes? Yeah, and we and we we raid with some of those emotes too. Click here to display stats. Emote usage per day, about 20. Huh. All right, I'm going to look into that later. Because basically, I just need to decide which emotes aren't getting used. Um, and then um, figure out which ones we could potentially replace. Eventually, we'll do that. Okay, but this is the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, we are talking about chairs earlier. I think we're done with that. It's real time. That's pretty sweet. Um, okay, right now... I believe we actually left ourselves with a pat. Yeah, we left ourselves with a passing twist test suite. Um, but if we go to our test, we can uncomment the next test. And also, we're gonna go into uh, starts using all the less used emotes. I mean, we'll see. I mean, does that mean that you like all of them? <laughs> like, I could see us potentially replacing, like, first try, like, getting a different wow emote. Um, maybe the coding JS flower, or maybe even the CJ one we might re replace. I think the face ones are here to stay, but we could replace like the ah with one that looks more similar to Phil's bad man. Phil, Phil's, Phil's bad man? Phil's, not that one. What's the global emote called? Yeah, this one. What's that called? Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> not like this. Not like this! Because those two aren't quite the same. Alright, see you later, Ben. Thanks for hanging out. Looks like we're coding lazy list in Haskell. Now, this is JavaScript. <laughs> but uh, I guess a lazy list in Haskell, is that is that the same thing? Like, it's an infinite list? And Leo, thanks again for that hydrate. Cheers. It's my... <laughs> okay. Why you do this? Alright. So... Uh, next up is uh, we want to be able to do replicate. So list dot replicate ten one. So basically, it's really just this. It's kind of all we need to do, right? Um, replicate is just using its own internal function. So we should have a uh, static function replicate. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, focus mode. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, static function replicate that takes in the count and the value, I believe. And then we just return uh, this 
Like that. Passing test. Revive Newt! Five more gifted subs. <laughs> Why? What did I do? <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, man. Tier two gifted subs. Okay. Okay, everybody. We can get through this. <laughs> we can get through this. Um, I think we, we just got another focus mode um, added, so we're going to redeem that, too. We're going to do 16 minutes of focus. Yeah, I think we'll do... Uh, we'll, we'll definitely do more newts. Tier 2! We'll be right back after a message from our sponsor, <laughs> right, dude? Okay, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's double it. We're going to eight newts now. Look at that. Okay. So, uh, replicate was very easy because we just reused our existing function. Uh, it should work for those two things. I think this will break for a list length zero. Let's see. Oh, an anonymous gifter. <laughs> 10 gifted subs. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anonymous. Uh, we basically, we have an infinite loop. Uh, what the actual heck? Yeah. Um, I appreciate you. And congrats to Callow Creation. Oh, Boga Hey, too. Lots of friends. Lots of friends. Thank you, Anonymous. Was that you, Revive Newt? <laughs> um, oh, man. Tier two newts should be bigger. Uh, I think we can. I think we can make the newts bigger. Where, where do? Oh, we could scale the image. Yeah. If we look at our newt class, um, right now we're scaling it to uh, one negative two, but we could scale it to two. Foos! Thank you for the sub. Very much appreciated. Uh, the tier two is to get your attention about the focus mode <laughs> when it went through after it. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Revive New. Yeah, I, I, for, I forgot, but we're in focus mode now. Um, can we make them bigger? Is this going to work? Let's see. Look at those dudes. <laughs> All right, this is fine. Um, okay. Um, all right. I think this one, this test is the one that was failing. If you can see that, when we were saying replicate zero and undefined, um, there's some very large newts. Yeah, pretty good. Big newts. Cool. So these tests pass. Um, but the issue is we need to handle whenever we basically, we basically have a repeat with an undefined value and whenever we have a take value of zero. So uh, if we look at our take function, um, count, right, that's fine. But if we look at our to list function, to list, Um, we really should just say, like, if this dot start is equal to zero and this dot end is equal to zero, just return result. Don't even try. I think that's kind of what we want, because whenever we do this, we're basically saying uh, take zero. And when we call take zero, that will say start and end is zero. Right? Right? <laughs> um, all right. Failure. Take should have math.max and also think about needs math.min. OK. I think we'll get there. Um, is our two list function still broke? Let's see. 
cool. Replicate. Repeat. Undefined. Take zero. Um, <laughs> there's so many. I like these newts. <laughs> I like these newts on the screen. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, uh, since they're now twice as big, I'm gonna reduce the count, but I like them on the screen. Four newts. There we go. Really, actually, if I did that, if the length equals this dot end break, that should fix that scenario. Um, make the newts semi-transparent. I think I can do that. Um, I guess it would be on the canvas. Beets, eating beans. <laughs> Uh, it's 6 a.m. I gotta go to sleep. All right, see you later, Gabriel. Thanks for being here. Um, Alka, you know how I how I would do this in P5? Can I set actually? Can I set the background? Because right now, hello, uh, Mithra and I. Whoa, Nova script that looks so cool. <laughs> Oh, um, I want to make the, uh, the, this P5 canvas, I want to make it slightly transparent. Could use tent. We're in a hype train? Why did nobody tell me we were in a hype train? <laughs> when did that happen? When did this hype train happen? It's literally... You did? Okay, I guess I'm in a focus mode, technically. Thank you all. I, I appreciate you. Uh, well, I just want to make the... I mean, I guess I could do that potentially in OBS. 16 subs. Thank you all so much. Uh, do I just do p5.tent, or do, do I do canvas.tent? Do I do it in setup, or do I do it in draw? Banana pants. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's nice. That's really nice. It's probably easier to do it in CSS. Yeah, let's see. Because I can do it in my uh, CSS properties. Um, background color? Oh, I could just set the opacity of the body. 0 0.5. Yeah, just like that. There you go. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Uh, we're, we're over here writing code. Right now our, our tests are failing because function generator is not a function. Why is that? When are we ever passing the, some, that something? Noise brew. What's up, noise brew? Noise. <laughs> Welcome, raiders. Thank you for that raid. Welcome to the show. You have arrived at the coding garden. Uh, we're doing a lot of things. Um, one thing that we just did was we updated our overlay in honor of Revive Newt. You see Revive Newt in the chat. Um, uh, we updated our overlay to show these nice little newts crawling all over the place. Um, but what we're working on is a, a coding challenge uh, from the Code Wars website. It's actually, this is a pretty difficult one. It's a 2Q. But essentially, we are creating a data structure that is an infinite list. We're creating lists that can basically go on forever using generator functions. But yeah, that's it. You can click there to see what we're doing. But welcome, Raiders. What's up? What's up? Um, who all's here? Who's here? <laughs> Calicot, thanks for being here. Hello, hello. Yeah, what were you working on? Um, 
controller cage. Follow for slap. Wait, were you being slapped by follows? <laughs> were you building a robot that would uh, would slap you when somebody follows? Sub for bubbles. I want to know if that's what was actually happening. <laughs> uh, dire wire. I just put 20 volts through a cap and it exploded everywhere. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you, Fantasy Teapot. I appreciate you. Yeah, the brew crew. Welcome, brew crew. All right, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep coding. Um, actually, you can see that my my overlay is like it's hard for me to read the chat right now. It's because technically we're in focus mode. It's really hard for me to focus. And we just do that so that I can try to get things done. But you can check out that kata there. I'm gonna keep on coding. Um, right now we're trying to implement this test, which allows us to create a list of length zero. And then we need to be able to send it to an array. Oh, list.empty.toList. That's why this is failing. Because uh, list.empty we impl implemented at the beginning, and this is totally wrong. Yeah, basically we need um, a empty iterator that yields nothing. So when we return an empty list, we basically want... Um, a generator that, yeah, actually like a totally empty generator. And then uh, we start at zero and end at zero. That's the empty list. Why is this complaining? Expected empty generator function. Unexpected, oh, we're gonna disable that. Oh, I could, yeah, you're right. We could reuse our existing function. I like that. So we already have, uh, from list, and so it's just going to yield empty data. I, I like the way you think, mob, is instead of creating a generator, we can just say um, list dot from list, empty list. Great. Passing test. <laughs> All right, let's see what our other tests are. Um, we now need to, I mean, let, I mean, I think this should just, yeah, it just, it just works. It just works because we've already implemented all the other ones. So replicate a list of length 10 with nothing but ones, send it to a list, um, iterate uh, a certain value i times, take 10 of them, send it to a list. So now, all of our generator functions work. Now we actually need to implement these functions that we started to implement earlier, like get index, um, or head, or tail. Uh, but we're going to write them from scratch because before we were assuming an internal data representation that was an array, but now our internal data representation is just a generator function. It's a generator. So uh, let's start from the beginning. So if we go back up to these other tests, um, empty list should work, I believe. That works. Uh, from list, that works. From list to list, that works. This will break because we don't have a head function implemented yet. So we need to implement head. And head just returns the first value in the list. So in that case, we just need to yield yield the current value from the generator because the current value should be the first value in the, in the list. Um, so we're going to implement uh, head, which just says return this dot generator dot value I think no this dot generator is not a function oh generator dot next dot value so get the next value of the generator oh passing test <laughs> uh, okay so oh no never mind I didn't uncomment it yeah passing test and then tail is a little bit different the way tail works is it uh, takes everything except for the first value so it should be a failing test. Now we need to implement that. So tail, hello, Flory. Yeah, we're, we're coding away. We're working on generator functions. Um, so tail basically needs to um, skip the first value and then um, I mean, I guess I could to list it, remove the first value, and then from list it. Why not? So we could say uh, this dot to list, and then we create a list dot from list, 
and we slice off the first value. Just reuse the functions we've already written, right? Yeah, works. <laughs> Though I have a feeling that this potentially will fail on like really, really long lists. Um, Cause it's saying, we, uh, yeah, a mob is saying we need to build a new generator function. Like technically the tests pass, but um, why are you using list instead of uh, this inside the list class? Cause it's a static function. Yeah, so these are all instance methods. So you can use this. Uh, and these are all static functions, which you access from the actual uh, list value. All right, see you later, Revive Newt. Thank you again for all the supports. Yeah, Florin is asking, what are those blue things? These are these are Newts. <laughs> these are Revive Newts on my screen. In honor of all the support that uh, Revive Newt has brought to the stream. Um, we coded these last week, actually. It's uh, P5JS, and uh, it's a sprite sheet that um, uh, we animate. <laughs> In a custom way. Till minus just in, in, just increment start by one. Okay, that that technically works. Let's see. That still passes. Uh, we now need to implement get. Um. So get returns a value in the array. And basically, we need to iterate up until the value that they want. I think the thing is, we're basically modifying the internal iterator, though. It could break in other test cases. Does it work for infinite list, though? This right here, sending it to a list, we potentially could get an infinite loop, right? Right? <laughs> Calling slice won't work. It's going to break for other tests. We'll come to that when we, <laughs> when we get there. Um, use my start and end variables. Because we could create a new iterator that... OK. All right. If that's OK, we're going to go back to working on tail. So tail should return a list that is a new iterator that has a new starting value. So we're saying list from list. So when we do list from list, we're just yielding all of the values in data. But we basically want to skip the first value whenever it's tail. I have my start and end. But the where where am I actually using start and end? Iterate? No no no. Um I'm not actually using start and end, am I? So I need to take I need to take those into account. So like when we do two list, um which is, this is basically my entries function, like you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Well. So, when we get tail, we'll say this dot uh, function generator. We, we use the existing iterator. Our start is now start plus one. Um, we have our end. But whenever we say um, uh, from list, we actually need to set our start and end to be the length of the array, like 0 and data.length minus 1, like that, right? And then we can actually use that start and end in the um, in the to list function. But the default value is infinity, which is also fine. OK. Uh, so we'll say index starts at 0. 
and we'll say uh, if uh, index is greater than count uh, or start, and we're going to push the value. If it's greater than count and, um, oh no, if it's greater than or equal to start and index is uh, less than or equal to end, push it in. Otherwise, we're going to break. Uh, and then each time we increment the index. Yeah? Return a new list in dot tail, not from list. Oh yeah, 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 you're, you're absolutely right. New instance of a list. Where is this failing? Um, all right, see you later. See, see you soon, Oxnox. Index starts at this dot start. Yeah, so when we do tail, it gets rid of the first value. So it starts at the next one. Um, oh, you're right. No, 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 no. It, it starts at zero. Um, I think it starts at zero because we're iterating from the beginning of the generator. <sighs> do we really need to do this? I feel like we create the generator whenever we use it, right? We shouldn't have an internal instance of it. Where do I ac access this dot generator? To list. That's the only place. Okay, so I actually don't want this instance property. I don't think. I think whenever we say to list, we're going to create an instance of the generator. Um, so, like, generator equals this dot function generator. And then we use that here. Like that. Um, that way, we are actually creating an instance of it. Um, list dot generator equals list dot, and then same thing here. So if I go back to before, we should have passing tests. Um, why is this failing? Test line seven, test line 20. Increment out of the index, out of the conditional. Oh. To close this. Um, yeah, index increases every single time, no matter what. What's with the newts? Uh, it's in honor of revive newt. Skip start elements, then produce in elements, and rename rename them skip and take. How do I skip the start? I mean, this is how I'm skipping the start elements. Is there another way to um, increment the generator until we get past a certain point? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, this dot? <laughs> um, no, we will refactor this right now. Um, where is this erroring out though? Line 20. Okay, so those pass. Can we get an empty list? Yes. Can we do from list? Yes. Can we do from list with multiple? No, we cannot. Um, oh, so it didn't actually go up until the end. So... We're saying from list, an array of one, two, three. Um, so from list takes in an array and yields all of those values. So these are indices, zero up to the length minus one. Um, but actually index needs to go up to this dot in because we're missing the last value in the array. Leave the ranges at the default infinity. Okay. Okay, Doc. I can do that. 
Um, and that, I mean, yeah, that's going to make the test pass. Because basically, because we don't have an end value, we're just iterating to the end of the generator, which is going to give us all of the values. Oh, do you, you have the uh, um, uh, the goose bot? <laughs> okay, so that fixes that test. What about this one? Can we grab the head? No, uh, cannot read property next of undefined. Right, because we need to create an instance of the generator. Um, so instead, we say um, this dot generator function generator dot next dot value. Cool. All right. Um, now, can we get the head of an empty list? Yes, we can. Can we do from list tail to list? Oh, no. So this is actually spending, sending back an empty array. So um, in head, I should check iterator.done. Oh, well, uh, I changed it up, Doc. So. Um, basically, I'm creating a new instance of the generator any time we try to iterate. Like, I'm not, I'm not actually keeping a, a generator instance around anymore. Why am I keeping those on the screen? <laughs> because we've got an insane amount of support from uh, Revive Newt. Revive Newt has gifted 226 subs this month. Um, in total, they've gifted, like, over 300 subs to the channel. That might break down. <laughs> Uh, can you reset an iterator? 320? Okay. Yeah, they've gifted a ton. So many. So, the newts are in honor of them. Hopefully, they're not too annoying. They test with functions that have side effects. Okay. We're going to go back to what we were doing then. Put the generator back. And then I think the main fix was... When we say from list, we don't specify that. Cool. So it's the same failing test. Um, for whatever reason, we're getting back an empty array. Let's look at that. So right now, the test says uh, from list, we call tail, and then call to list. So when we call tail, that should actually return... Um, So it returns a new list. Let's look at the tail function. We're passing in the same generator. We're starting one after the current list, which means we're skipping the first value. And we're going to the current end value, which defaults to infinity. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. It's the same list with start plus one. Um, but for some reason, um, that is returning an empty list. Return a new list with a new generator ignoring the first element. So that's what I'm that's what I'm attempting to do because if I change the start value, now our to list function um, actually just ignores the first one because index starts off at zero. We get the first value in the generator. Uh, index is not greater than one, which is the start. So we skip it. Um, oh, but that needs to be iterated outside, right? Or it needs to be incremented no matter what, because, um, if it was greater, push it in. If it wasn't, don't push it in, but still increment the index. And then the next time around, it'll push, push the next value, right? The problem with making a new generator, if the generator is generating elements by calling function with side effects, there are tests that make sure it should only be called once per element. Use the start and end values, use next on the generator. You're saying you don't, don't use a for of? Is that what you're saying? But also, Doc, I went back to um, using the same instance of the generator. I don't know why it's broken. <laughs> We're figuring that out right now. Uh, the problem of making a new generator, if the generator is generating elements by calling a function with side effects, there are, te uh, yeah, yeah, I think we talked about that. Uh, because if we've, oh, you're right. We don't want to break. 
Mew True! Thank you for the raid! Welcome, raiders! <laughs> we are, um, we're deep in code right now. <laughs> we're very deep in code. <laughs> Thank you for being here, though. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Look at all those shrimps. Very cool. Um, we are doing this. <laughs> this is a, a code kata for implementing an infinite list. It's a data structure that allows you to have lists that go on forever, forever and ever. <laughs> um, you're making a poop clicker game? That actually reminds me of uh, Dung Hero. We were talking about this earlier. This is the, um, the poop collector game that we made. It's totally online. To date, 615,000 poops have been collected, or dungs, um, and you can collect them too. So if you go here now, you can collect you can collect dungs with me. It's it's like rate limited, so you can't collect dungs too fast. They stole from me. Wait, what? No, I made this. I I made this app like months ago. <laughs> um, is that what you're saying? And hello, Napcat. Yeah, great job, everyone, collecting all them dungs. If you leave the page open, you can keep collecting. Did we get seven reds rates today? Uh, we've gotten rated by CM Griffin, Noise Brew, and Mewtru. And then in our, yeah, good clean up, good clean up everyone. Great work, great work. No, no, you stole from me. <laughs> Look, I'll show you. We have, we have evidence on GitHub. Yeah, six months ago. <laughs> um, this repo was created uh, six months ago. <laughs> And there's evidence. I actually built it live on stream. It was a part of uh, DevEd's uh, game challenge. Um, I, I, I have, I like you can you can make a poop collector game all you want. I have no, I have no, I have no claim to the poop collecting um, genre, you know. Um, Dunk hero. But it was a coding challenge. We made it in like an hour and a half. Yeah. That's really funny. Is it is it similar? Is that what you're working on? Like literally clicking the poops to collect. Them? <laughs> I've missed a ton of redemptions. I'll look at those right now because we're distracted. <sighs> My overlay is frozen. When did the lizards become a thing? Uh, like thirty minutes ago. Oh, Oxdox, I missed your focus mode. We'll, we'll have to enable that. Uh, thank you, JD, for the posture check. BMAX with the hydrate. Cheers. What are you doing, everyone? Them poops are showing up again. You better click on them. Uh, C Piggot with the posture check. And uh, Master with the hydrate. Cheers. And NovaScript with the hydrate. Hmm. Hmm. And brew. There's a lot of messages, so my overlay is um, really slow. Where do you click? Uh, whenever the poops show up, you click on the poops. <laughs> Was there dung in the drink? Oh. I don't know. Newt, newt. <laughs> What's happening? All right, we got a bunch of follows. Let's acknowledge, acknowledge those. I appreciate y'all. Uh, Gabriel, thanks for the follow. Uh, Lil Milk, thanks for being here. Uh, Banana Pants, much appreciated. Josephina Purpurina, thank you for the follow. Uh, Calicot, thanks for following. RJ Holmes, thanks for following. Uh, Pytodos, 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 thanks for following. Heinz, thank you for following. Uh, Tavo Event, thank you for following. Uh, Hot Crazy, thanks for that follow. MB Rooster, much appreciated. And totally not Mark. Thanks for being here. All right. Yeah, I do need. <laughs> Dung Hero is free labor. <laughs> I redeemed it already? Oh, okay. Okay. Is it possible for the screen to entirely fill with dungs? No, there's a there's a maximum limit on it. Um Oh yeah, we're pretty close to 13k. Yeah, we don't we don't want to break. Basically, we don't want to break. We only we actually want to break if index is greater than or equal to end. Uh, 
That's when we want to break. That's why it's failing right now. Um, this dot end. Passing test. <laughs> All right. Empty list, tail, passing test. Uh, now we actually need to implement get. Okay. We're back to the actual the, the idea of implementing um, a specific index. Ta-da. Um, make a entries generator that is the only thing that actually calls the function generator to list, then simply becomes return. Okay. Then implement a memoized generator class when side effects become an issue. All right. So like basically this right here becomes our entries. And then we memoize. We memoize it. Yeah. Yeah, and you're saying um, instead of doing a for of, we actually just call next on the generator. Oh. Oh, I see. You're saying entries is actually a generator itself. Because technically, you can spread an iterator or a generator into an array because it just yields all the values. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, so um, to list is actually uh, return this dot, well, return an array with all of the entries in it. Like that. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and then uh, to list becomes entries, um, but it's actually a generator function. Where does the star? I always forget where the star goes. The star goes after the function keyword. So would I do it like that? Like that. Unexpected token. How do I make a generator function that's the that's a property, uh, or sorry, that's a method um, on a class. Uh, this list is uh, a lot more complex than just a regular plain old link list. You just do star space. Generator function does not have a yield. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, so basically what we do is uh, this goodness here. We're, we're not pushing into a result. We're actually just yielding the value. Done. If index is greater than or equal to start, and index is less than or equal to end, yield it. If index is greater than or equal to the end, break out. Every iteration, we increment the index. Do we still have passing tests? No. Where are our passing tests failing? This is what I don't like about the test that I copy pasted is, um, um, these are all mixed into the same test, so I can't tell where it's actually failing. Uh, if index is less than or equal to this dot start plus this dot in. Why are you invoking this dot start and this dot in? Are you all doing still doing pretty well on Dung Hero? <laughs> yeah, good job, everyone. Keeping them, keeping them in line. Yeah, I probably should stop being live, but... I can't stop doing this. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're going to build a browser extension clicker? There is a timeout. You're only allowed to click one dung every two seconds or something like that. Um, all right, this is still, still filling. Oh. 
We're, we're actually receiving an extra value. I think that's the issue. Um, less than this dot end. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, can we do that? Yes, we can. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Can we do that? Of course we can. Can we do that? You betcha. Can we do that? Okay. Can we do this? Right on. This will fail because there's no git method. Okay. So now uh, we need to actually implement git of a certain index. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, th that would work, Andrew. <laughs> that's your that's your browser extension. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Espin so Juan Juanma, thank you for the hydrate. Cheers. So now, when we get a specific index, <clears throat> we need to just yield the first value, right? Um, what I thought it was like this dot generator, like invoke it, and uh, not don't invoke the generator, but get the next value. Get just four of entries until you reach that number of entries. Oh. But um, how do I keep track of the index? Right? I mean, I kind of want to do a for loop, right? Because <laughs> if I do a for loop, then I can actually manually, I mean, I'll have the index. Can you get the index? in a for of, I guess I'll just have a counter like I did on the outside. Okay. Um, let count equals zero. But I need the index and the value. Const value of this dot entries. Oh no, I need to create a generator. Like that. Uh, if, oh, and then on each iteration we say count plus plus. Say if uh, count is equal to index return value, like that. Um, why is this complaining? Expected to return a value at the end of the method. So if we make it all the way through, I guess we return undefined. We'll be explicit about it. Use the function generator itself. See, that's what I thought. But Doc is telling me <laughs> to reuse uh, generate the actual generator here. I mean, that I think this is going to... Yeah, it makes our test pass. But we... <laughs> We have such a long way to go. I think I'm going to have to end streaming soon. Um, let's see how many lines this is. We'll do half of these, and then I have to go. Um, can I see how many? Okay, what's 78 minus 18? 60, right? No. Yeah, 60. So we need to get 30 done. Um, 18 plus 30 is line 48. We need to go all... Oh, wow, this is this is a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna set a um, skip ahead to filter and map. But actually, here's the thing: uh, these two should just work because we implemented that in a good way. Um, from list take to list. Should that just work? Yeah, that just works. Uh, we did we haven't implemented drop yet, so that's not gonna work. Uh, we haven't implemented length, so. That's not, let's see. Nil. The thing is, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Here's the thing, Doc. Right now, I'm reusing the generator instance in entries. 
should I actually be creating a new instance of the generator whenever I call entries? Like that way entries is like our way of doing it fresh without modifying the internal um, state. Is that what I should be doing? Because that way that would allow us to get the count because what I'm thinking of is if we're using this instance and we iterate all the way to the end, then the generator is done, even though we were just trying to get the index. Right? Right? Okay, we're going to turn the newts off for now. <laughs> Yep, I think so. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> I mean, our tests are still going to pass because we're not really testing if we're mutating the internal uh, generator. All right. And then let's uh, just work on length. Um, I mean, we kind of just do this again. But we actually just increment the count all the way till the end, and then we return the count. Um, actually, I could do like while while hello Grandpa Toffee, welcome to the show. <laughs> while generator dot next dot value is a thing. Does that work? Hey. <laughs> So while the generator actually has a value, uh, increment the count. That gives us the length. The length. Uh, when I have functions that call functions with side effects, you need to wrap that in something that memoizes. Memoize. Memoize. And hello, Arkold. Uh, we're working on a code kata that is infinite, Im implementing uh, infinite lists. Um, oh, while the while the generator while the generator is not done, that makes sense too. Basically, I was looking at um, if it didn't return a value, but it's possible that we have undefined values. So we'll just say while the iter generator is not done, count the number of things. Yeah. So um, <sighs> chat, there have been two people that has have asked what I'm doing, and nobody helped them. Nobody's helped them. <laughs> this is it. If you click this link. This link, this link, um, this is the thing that I'm working on. Um, it's a it's a fairly difficult uh, coding problem where we have to implement a, um, uh, a a list that allows for infinite values. Uh, and right now we're just working through that. So we've got we've oh you have a rate limit that's that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, but we've gotten through quite a. You're focused on me. Well, thank you everyone. <laughs> We've gotten quite a bit done, uh, so we can create empty lists. Um, we can create uh, an infinite list that gets initialized from an array of data. Uh, we can create an infinite list that just repeats a single value for, for, for forever. And the way we're doing that is with a generator function. Uh, we can also create um, a infinite list that iterates from a current, oh, uh, actually that iterates and each value, it takes the value you pass in and pass it into a function. Um, cycle just repeats the internal list value forever, ever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Um, yeah. So, but basically, we have this big old test suite. Is this is definitely a hard one? Uh, we're only like maybe forty percent there. Actually, I'm very curious. If I just throw this into Code Wars right now, let's see how many of the tests pass. Um, we can we can basically tell how many how many tests we have to go. Um, can I turn on Babel so I can have static classes? Forty percent. Let's see. Uh, seventeen passing tests, twenty three failed. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. What's seventeen out of twenty three? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's the total. Seven, um, 17 out of uh, 17 plus 23. That's 43%. 43%. Uh, more tests magically appear when, when those ones pass. Let's see. No, no, 
no, it's the same. So I'm doing. Uh, so if I just do test, we're only gonna have uh, one passing test. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, I see. The moment it fails a test, it just stops running the test. <laughs> when I do test, but if I do attempt, um, an F minus forty three percent. I mean, I've actually got a, like a, a surprising amount done on this problem today. Like every time we've done a one or a two Q, it's taken me multiple, multiple days to finish it. Um, L dot drop is not a function. Concat is not a function. I don't know. I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes and then I'm going to go, but we have 10 more minutes to work on this problem. Finish it. I, I don't like, I don't know if you saw Andrew, but these are all the tests that I still have to get passing, <laughs> but let's start at the top. Okay. So we need to implement, uh, the only piece I'm missing is map and filter. Okay. So, uh, we need to implement a function called drop, which drops that number of elements should be easy. This is fine. <laughs> so, uh, and drop is an instance method. Drop is not a static method. So, um, we will say drop. We'll drop a specific count. Honestly, does it return need to return a new list? Because I think we can just say this dot start equals count plus one. Like we, um, Two, three, four. Expected two. I really don't know how to interpret these tests, um, but new list. So you're not modifying the current, but yeah. N oh, new list. Okay. So instead of modifying start, I can actually just return um, a new list with the current generator function, and then um, count. will be the starting place, one. And then the existing this.in. Ta-da! Okay, great, so we can we can drop. Uh, we implemented length, right? That works. Quick stretch. Uh, it is currently 10.50 p.m. Yeah, and uh, I'll link you all, so uh, this is like, I, I rarely ever work with generators. And I'll mention, I mean, I guess I was going to say in the, in the, in the real world as a professional <laughs> web developer, you don't really see them that much. However, if you ever work with uh, Redux Sagas, uh, you see generators a ton. Um, and uh, there was an app I worked on a while back that had a bunch of, um, I still technically support that app, but you see generators all over the place. This is basically a way of doing uh, async stuff with Redux, but they use generator functions. Um, but a generator function is a function that can return more than one value. And it returns a different, potentially a different value each time you invoke it. That link is probably going to break because it has a star on the end. Can we, H can we URL encode a star? Uh, URI encode URI component. No, it's just a star. Well. Uh, <laughs> the Twitch link parser is broken because it left off the star. Um, async functions are actually defined in terms of generators and can be implemented using them. All oh, right, so uh, like the the fact that it pauses execution, like this technically returns the value, pauses execution, and then when the function is invoked again, it re uh, it resumes execution and returns the next value. It's very similar to async await because await. Uh, essentially pauses the execution of the code below the await until the, the thing above it has um, link works. Let's see. It's wrong though. <laughs> so this is just a plain old function. You want to do function star. That's your generator function. There you go. Wait, does that link work in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Their link parser is off. Um, all right, I'm just procrastinating. We do have passing tests though, so that's good. Um, I can create a list from a, an array of one and we have length one, that works. Length two, that should work. 
empty.nil. I need to look at the problem description to even see what nil should do. It's kind of the same thing, but different. <laughs> um, methods. Nil. True for empty, false otherwise. Ah, ah, okay, easy enough. Um, so we need nil. We'll say uh, return this dot length equals zero. Yeah, Doc's got it. <laughs> I can do this. I can write tests. All right, so uh, this should return false because it does have a length, and this should also return false. Cool. All right, this one wants a function called cons. What does cons do? Concat, construct. Um, X prepended to the list. Oh. Well. <laughs> Uh, why don't I return this dot end? Oh, because we're not always overwriting it, and we actually default to uh, infinity <laughs> because we could potentially uh, iterate forever. Um, there might be a better way to do it, but that's just how I've handled it so far. But yeah, um, this will be fun. So cons needs to return a new list. Um, this is an instance method, but it's going to have a new kind of generator. Um, cons. Um, and it passes in the value that you need to basically prepend. Um, and so we do something like this. So this, um, I mean, I'll figure it out, but basically that's in our generator function. The value is going to be the first thing that we yield. Um, so we're going to say yield value. Um, and then we actually um, need to yield the previous list. Yep, this dot entries. That's what I thought. <laughs> All right, why is this complaining? Uh, this has to be used by a class method. Uh, we're using this. It's being used right there. Oh. Hmm. I have to I have to specify it outside of it. So, entries equals this dot entries. Yeah, I gotta bind it. Or I could do it, just put it on the outside and then invoke it like this. Oh, I can destructure it. <laughs> so we're creating a, a new iterator that yields the first value that is being passed in, but then after that, it yields all of the existing values. And I guess technically we should do like this.start and this.end. Oh no. Cannot read property function generator of undefined. Look at uh, cons. Yeah, I mean we're we're getting all kinds of practice with generators here. Some serious stuff. Actually, do I not need to invoke it? Do I just specify it? No, no, no. no. Okay. Um. So this needs. So we can see that when we say two lists, we're getting back an array, but that array has this value at the front and these two values at the back. So basically, we need a generator that yields this value and then it yields this value two and then three. Um. But it's breaking. Yield the value. Yield all of the existing entries. Call entries outside the generator. Oh, right, because it needs to actually, um, I 
Yield X. Oh, you're, oh, you're, oh, okay. So you're saying if I, if I call this dot entries here, we can literally bind the, actually, I mean, I guess I could do this. Bind it with this. Does that work? Wow. <laughs> That's not what Doc said, so I figured it out myself. <laughs> but basically, uh, inside of this function, we need this to be the instance. Wow. Uh, <laughs> we need this to be the instance and not the function or potentially the global scope. I don't even know what this would be. But we're in this case, we're creating a new instance of the function that binds it to this. All right, great work, everyone. Uh, if we get an empty list and then we do that, beautiful. If we, oh, now we have to implement a pinned. Uh, Right-minded with the two month reset. Thank you so much, right-minded. I appreciate you. Two months, two months. All right, I'm technically out of time and I think this is a good place to stop. Um, we're gonna leave that test failing. A pinned is cons with an extra star. Well, I mean, because technically uh, a pinned return, uh, a pinned takes in a list. I see. What is list.empty returning? List.empty is, okay. So we technically, I can implement it. I can, I can, I can do this. So instead of cons, we have uh, a pinned with a list. And then it looks exactly the same. The only difference is we actually yield the previous list before we yield the current list. Um, so we would say yield star with uh, list dot generator. No, function generator. Um. Oh, list.entries, of course, but of course. <laughs> so grab all of them. Um, and technically the start is zero and then the end is um, the total length. I guess we just don't specify the end. And we don't specify the start, default. What the heck? It's too easy. It's too easy. Um, Append from list to list. It all just works. It all just works. <laughs> now we need slice. That technically changes where it starts. Okay, I'm I'm done. Let's see let's see how many passing tests we have with this. But I'm done. Thank you, Shaggy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um. Uh, hello, hot crazy. So I've asked the chat to help me today because. <laughs> Um, I've been writing a lot of code and, um, a lot of people are wondering what I'm doing. So chat, are you going to help hot crazy? How can you help hot crazy with letting them, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Whoever did it. Uh, yeah, this is the, this is the kata that I'm solving. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to end it right here. I just want to see how many passing tests I have. Oh, do we got an infinite loop? Are we going to time out? Oh no. Shaggy. Thank you, Shaggy. Shaggy's got my back. Um, look at that. 35 passing, 16 failing. So that's um, 35 out of 35 plus 16. That's 67%. We've gone from an F to a D. 67. Is that a D or a C? We got a D. <laughs> we've got a, we're, we're, we've got a D, 69%. Um, cool, yeah, but uh, for those of you that are just joining, you have no idea what's happening. Uh, it's this particular problem. Basically, we're, we're implementing a data structure that is an infinite list. So um, initially when we started, it, it looked uh, like so very similar to just your standard list data structure with functions like head, tail, and it, last length, and all that. But there's some extra special things that we had to do with it. Um, so it had to have these functions like iterate, repeat, cycle, replicate. I think one of the most, like an interesting one to show you kind of what we could do with this 
is the the cycle one. So cycle allows you to specify a list with some initial values and then it basically just iterates over those values forever and ever with no end. Um, so the example was like this. So um, we have a list that's just ha that starts with the values one, two, and three. But then we want to take 10 of them. And so what we do, and, and then to generate that to a list, is we actually cycle through them. So we do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So uh, basically, we're creating lists that can just go on forever with all these interesting functions like repeat and take and replicate and cycle. Um, and it's been pretty fun. And the way we've implemented it with is with generator functions in uh, in JavaScript, which are basically functions that can return multiple values. And the, the execution of the function can be paused before yielding another value. But uh, we've actually gotten quite a bit done. <laughs> I'm, pr I'm proud of what we've done so far. Yeah, so the the star is the in JavaScript how we we signify a generator function, um, and that is a function that can uh, instead of using the return keyword, you use yield, which means it can the first time this function this generator is invoked, um, we return that value i, but then the next time it's invoked, we actually return i plus ten. So the generator keeps track of where it is, and the next time it's invoked, it goes to the next yield. I'm gonna, I was going to say it's multiply. Hey, hey, Alka. <laughs> and so uh, what's interesting is a lot of these, these the, the implementations we've done of the generator functions is a, essentially just an infinite loop. Uh, and this isn't blocking, because basically the first time the generator is called, we yield a value. And then the next time it's called, we yield the value again. And then the next time it's called, we yield the value again. Um, and so even though this looks like it would be an infinite loop, we're only technically yielding one value at a time. And so like repeat allows us to do things like this. Uh, so we say repeat one. So basically this is a generator that always, always, always just yields the value one forever and ever. No matter how many times you call that generator, it just always yields one. Um, and then when we say take 10, that basically limits the number of invocations to 10. And then we turn that into an array. Um, but yeah, this has been fun. All this code is going to be on GitHub. Um, so if you check out my code katas re repo repo, um, here, all of the code from past code katas episode is are up here. Episode fifty five, which is today, is going to be uploaded, and then next week we'll we'll try to finish this. And thank you, uh, Laconic. Yeah, yeah, we were mentioning that earlier. So um, in the real world, that's probably the only place. Uh, that I have seen uh, generators used in practice is with uh, sagas, which are basically a way of doing uh, asynchronous things with Redux and React. Um, if you've heard of thunks in Redux, that's the other way of handling asynchronous behavior, but sagas uses generators, uh, which is pretty interesting. Honestly, honestly, uh, Redux Saga seems like an over-engineered mess, but it works. <laughs> I'm tired. I gotta go. Um, yeah, you're welcome, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me. Wow! Wait, what is that, Alka? Is that just, it's just an image. Okay. And, uh, hello, S.Code. Hello. Thanks for being here. Magic arrays. <laughs> yeah, working with streams of data, because it's basically like a never-ending uh, supply of data. Uh, thunks are way easier to... Uh, Reason about? If you want to say that, I hate saying reason about. They're emotes? Are they each individual letters? I don't know. Um, okay. We got some follows. Who are you, Lord Apples? Thank you for being here. Israel, thanks for the follow. Grandpa Taffy, thanks for being here. Zank, I appreciate you. Flint Cello, much appreciated. Enix Core, thanks for being here. Uh, Avo, thank you for the follow. S.Co, thank you for the follow. Uh, Lightning Jin, thank you for following. Delta Time, thanks for the follow. Sagrasam, thanks for following. Santa Marco, much appreciated. And Joker, 2K999, thank you for being here. This has been a fun day. I have, I've streamed a lot today. I mean, I streamed like three hours this morning or two, two and a half hours this morning. Went to work, launched a product, had a demo. 
did some DevOps stuff. Now we've been here for four hours. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me. I found something else that uses generators. You can you can find uses for them. I think there are there are like other ways of doing it. You could do it with a closure, like your your return. You could have a closed over scope that keeps track of the current return value. And um, the the thing about a generator is you actually do have to invoke the next function. So you could implement something that has a next function and keeps track of the current value. Yeah. One day I'll be as good as you. I believe it. Keep keep keep, uh, keep at it. I am not a genius. <laughs> no. I'm just very motivated. What's up, C and Griffin? You're still here. I'm not sure if we mentioned, but async await uses generators under the hood. Yeah. I, I don't think I mentioned that, but um, if you're if you're new and if you've seen like async await, that's like uh, one one way to think about it. Wait, async function? Why do I keep like why do I keep finding like generator function or async function instead of actual? async function like this yeah but uh if you've used async await um you know that like this essentially waits for the promise to resolve so it's kind of like pausing the execution of the function just like a yield would and i believe technically you can yield a promise can't you yield a promise it'll treat it like a like a generator Uh, you can also use them from cooperative multitasking. Yeah. And yeah, and you could look at uh, can I use, because I think the uh, generators, uh, uh, generators have more support than async await, which is why uh, Babel would convert async await into generators. Yeah, so ES6 generators. Um, edge all the way back to version 13 not in like zero support in ie let's compare that with async await so if we're if we're talking about edge <laughs> uh async wasn't supported until version 15 um and async also wasn't supported until version 52 of Firefox and 55 of Chrome, whereas generators have been there since version 26 of Firefox and version 39 of Chrome. So yeah, generators have been for for much long, been around for much longer. So that's why Babel would output that instead of async await. Informative disregard Gary? I don't know what this word is. <laughs> what is this word? Have you met someone that you thought this probably isn't for you? What do you mean by that? Oh, desugaring. What? <laughs> I was like, what is this word? <laughs> Informative desugaring. Cool. Um, sugar. <laughs> Put the D in the front. <laughs> I'm tired. I need to go. Though I do really like hanging out with you all. Um, this has been fun. Um, what is this? What do you got for me? Posture check. Five minutes ago. I think the next time you see me, I'm going to be standing up. I think that's the thing. Stay forever. <laughs> no, I got to go to bed. Um, I appreciate you all. We're going to do a raid, though. Let's get that raid message ready. Uh, CJ, hitting the sugar. <laughs> all right, we're going to do the hello friend emote. Uh, we'll say coding... Um, we want the coding heart, we want the coding seedling, and we'll say coding garden raid. We need, we need to capture this raid message somewhere, and then the coding garden pog champ. I suggest using lowercase raid messages. Yes, uh, but I've, I've started doing that after, uh, uh, bots were removing our messages for all caps, but bots shouldn't care about this, right? Hello, Karate Wump. <laughs> there was a hole in my head? Oh, yeah, I knew. I knew. All right, and if you're not a sub, this is yours. You get the wave. Actually, we'll, we'll replace this. You get, instead of that, we're going to do a wave. And then we're going to get the heart. Uh, 
and we're gonna get the seedling and we're gonna get the real pop pop champ I'm not a sub anymore oh that f that feeling when you're not a sub anymore yeah um, yeah cool so <laughs> if you're if you're not not a sub this is your this is your raid message Oldest subs, Alka, Greasy Woot, David, Unhot, The Real Pygon, Nafto, Refactor, Sorali, Acid Spark, Light Year Away, I'm the Benja, Aaron, Instafluff, and Sean. Huh. Oh, oh, like, have I ever... Okay, I see what you're saying. Come across someone where I'm just like, this is not for you. Um... Nah... Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I gotta go though. I mean, I've uh, when I was a teach when I was teaching coding, I taught like well over 150 students. Um. All right. G to G. Stick around for the raid. This was really fun. The next stream will be on Friday morning, and I will it will be a code review stream. So if you've got lots of seedlings saved up, you can spend 10,000 seedlings uh, to do a code review, which will be nice. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being here with me. Uh, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this.